Politics are nothing for her poverty, not the needy. Them too selfish and greedy. Yes, indeed. Peace and blessings, man. Black Star Sports TV here with you, man. Coming at you on this Saturday morning, man. Yeah, we got a, a special show coming up today, man. I just got to briefly talking to uh, the champ, man, uh, Freddie Pendleton, man. We should be in for a good one, man. Uh, sent out the links and everything, so just a matter of them brothers getting the links, clicking on the button and coming on in. My road dog, basement boxing talk, he'll be here in there shortly, man. You know, he got his radio show popping off here. And uh, we're going to get it cracking, man. We're going to get it cracking. We're going to talk that boxing, man. Uh, it's been in the works for a uh, little while, man, and with the good brother Trick Nolte, man. You know, Trick Nolte promotions, man. That's that's the dude, man. He in the know. So he been hitting me up and like, hey, you know, Black Star, you know, we used to get brother on the show, man. Just missing the third, man. We're going to try to hook this up. So. Hey, I got the call this morning, man. It was a bit of a surprise, and uh, I couldn't really notify notify everybody the way that I wanted to. But hey, we do what we can do when opportunity arises, and here we go, man. And, and we're gonna get at it, man. Let's see who, who's in the building, man. We got oh man, we got the DMV in the building, man. We got Dre's finest in the building, man. Salute, good brother. Yes, indeed. DMV in the building. Salute, Black Star. That's what. It, yeah, man. Good to see you, good bro. Yes, indeed. Peace and love to the fam. We got Mike 202, man. You know, as usual, man. The road dog soldiers, man. They here they come, man. Here they come. Yes, and dude. Saluting out the good brother Dre Finest, man. Uh yeah, Dre Finest shooting out uh Mike 202, man. The underrated one, the number one grind. I can't do it like he do it, man. He got he got he got a skill with that, man. That's 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 hot, man. Salute to you, Black Star TV and the fan, man. Salute to you, good brother. Hey, bro, man. You, uh yeah, man. Matter of fact, I'm gonna toss you a link too, bro. If you want to, man. If you got time to, I know you. We, we gonna go. We gonna go on late on the day too. But if if you, you want to, man. I was trying to, you know, it was spur of the moment thing, man. So trying to work with it, man. Trying to work with it. Uh, yeah, Dre Fine. Oh, uh, yeah, underrated. We got Mike Two or Two saluting everybody. Uh, okay, we got underrated one. Dre Fine is on here. Man, the good brother A Weapons is in the building, man. Big salute to this brother here, man. A Weapons, man. Black Star salute and peace to the entire chat room, man. Hey, right back at you, good brother, man. A Weapons in the building, man. Dude, all he do is good work. <laughs> man, I'm telling you, man, the brother designed some, some nice kicks and things, man. He's even showing me some of the prototypes he's working on, man. That brother do some work, man, for sure. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed, man. Uh, let me see. Okay, uh, I'm ready to say he's back. All right. Oh, you just came back? Yeah, bro. I'll send you a link if you want one, good bro. If you, if you feel like chopping it up now, because I know we're going to get up, you know, at, you know, later you know, on your show today. Um, yeah, we need a good brother basement to come in, man, and, and link up with himself and his radio show, man. Um, but it's kind of like on a, on a the spur of the thing, man. So I didn't really get a chance to hit everybody like normally we would we would want to do man because normally we'd be on uh basement uh channel man but by it being so tight like that i didn't have a chance to really communicate with that brother to get us linked in the way we needed to be to, to jump on it like hey because it was like you know hey you know i had to give it to him now and i didn't have a link from the brother so i had to give him what i could do so here we go you know so you know what i'm saying just to let everybody know and normally this time we'd be on basement's uh channel today and uh we may have something coming up a little later today as well uh, so definitely hang hang tuned with us, man. We'll let you know definitely by the end of the the, uh, the show today, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. This, yeah. Let me send this one out here too, man. Let me send this out here. Yeah. Let me send this back right now.
Yes, indeed. And um, yeah. Yeah, good brother. A Rebel says, LOL, I'm trying. Now, you doing more than that, brother. You doing it, my brother. You doing it. For sure, for sure. Yes, indeed, man. Get out of there. Yeah, I just sent that to you on the, on the radio. I just sent you the link, good brother. Check your um your, your JT one. Yes, indeed. Yeah, man, we may have some good brothers, Kurt Anderson, uh, Stormy B, man, and, and, and maybe even Blood Boxing come through today, man. I sent out the links to the brother, man, you know, because, hey, you know, us uh, us old here has got to stick together, man. So, hey, when when something like this come through, man, I reach out to my brothers, man, and, uh, yeah, hopefully they'll jump on in here and uh, help us out, man. It's always a good time when you get together with the brothers, man, and, and uh, you know, it's one of the, the big reasons why I'm even on YouTube, man. Link up with likewise brothers, man, and it's been a blessing to run into some really good brothers, man. Like you know, like yeah, like, like all of you in the chat, man. Dre Finest, uh, Underground Darkness for sure. Mike Two O Two, the Black Panther, man. You know, Bruce Golds, man. I mean, come on, man. That's that's the fam right there. You know, yes indeed. Bruce Golds in the building, man. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't shout y'all Bruce Golds, my bad. Yes indeed, Black Bruce Golds in the building, man. Salute to you, good brother. Yes indeed. Always come through, man. That's that's the fan right there. Hey, hold on, how that? Oh, okay. Wait a minute. I hit the wrong one. There we go. The good brother, underrated one. The number one. You gotta say that. You gotta say. It. Oh, I gotta say it. You gotta say the it, man. Oh, one, two, three. The number one grinder. There he is. There he is in the building, man. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Let's go, fam. Let's go, fam. Yeah, man. Uh. Yeah, we waiting on the champ, Freddie Pelton, to, to roll through here, man. Him and the good oh, brother. wow. Yeah, man, he's supposed to come through, man. So I just we just talked to the brother uh, just a little bit ago, man. I tell you, he got some things to tell, man. So, hey, I'm going to let him cook on it, bro. You know, a uh, hell of a champ. Fearless, fearless Freddie Pelton, man. Fight anybody, man. He ain't duck no one. He won all the stuff. They, they was ducking him. He won all. <laughs> yeah, they, they won. he won all that smoke. Yes, sir. Sir, he he wants all that. Yeah, yeah did. Fearless Freddie Pennington. That's right. Fearless. Where, where are these fearless? Yeah, fearless, see, fearless one, that too, When he hop on this camp, man, for sure, yeah. man. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 fam. A little later on, I'm gonna do a little commentary on Black Star if we have time, or if not, it's gonna be on my channel later on. Either way, yeah, 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 yeah definitely, man. Because, yeah, you, I know you got enough to cook on, man. So, it's just whatever you know what I'm saying. So we do like right now we we waiting on the brothers to file in man when they file in we gonna hey we gonna take off like a rocket man he's, he's the champ exactly. else, man he was he was telling us stories man i didn't want to get off the phone but if i didn't get off the phone we couldn't get on here and we wouldn't have a show so i, I was like right hey, hey, <laughs> <laughs> stuck between the rock and the hard place man yes indeed shout out to the good brother yeah, exactly P dog man. is in the building man salute black star yes indeed salute to P you dog brother. what's good Yes, no, yes, yes, yes. Yes, indeed, mm -hmm. man. Yeah, Trey Finest in the building, man. This is always good when the DMV roll up in here, man. Feel good, man. It's the time I be homesick, man. The brothers got to come through, you know, hey, man, show a little love. Yeah, Trey yeah. Finest, Trey Finest. Yes, indeed, man. Yeah, yeah, shout out, shout, shout, yeah, shout out to KQKC, man. Had a yeah. bombing live not too long ago, man. Woo. Always, always, man. So, I ain't think I was going to yeah, man. So, so. Yeah, I didn't think I was gonna get in on the call. Yeah, me too. Like times, man. I was like, "What's going on?" Yeah, man? me too. That's how I felt. I like that. I can get in. I said, "I finally got." It. I said my little piece, man. About yeah. about that sixty forty guy, sixty forty guy, man. I feel like. Man, it, it, well, wait till you hear what the champ got to say about that situation. That's what I said. Ooh, I, I can't imagine. Yeah, right. <laughs> Indeed, shout out, salute to the good brother, the black brother, man. My wingman's in position, man. They doing their thing. Yes, indeed. Always, always. Yeah, man. I was excited. Yeah, I ain't gonna... talk about this for a minute, man. So it's like you know, these guys be busy, man, and and uh, you know, sometimes things get twisted up, and you can't, you know, I don't want to go up and put a big thing out and let everybody know he's coming, and then things fall out. So we had to make sure things is definitely going to go right. down before we do that. So yeah, exactly. So we did that but I tell you man. one thing, yeah, I could tell you when I got off when I got off the um 
when I got off your live, man, I was looking forward for today, man. I did. I know, man. We don't, we don't want to uh, disconnect from this thing, man. We do this 24-7. <laughs> we be like, man. Yeah, man. I got yo. Yeah, man. So when we look on here, we see somebody yeah, man. live, man, and we be on that bad boy. <laughs> look, look yeah, like, man. Man. Oh, yeah. Let me let. Yeah, let me let people know. After this, man, 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern time today, underrated boxing talk is going down. Come, come, come. If you have time, come through. The brothers will the brothers will follow. So just come through. It's an all day thing. It's a family yeah. thing up in peace. You know I mean? So we're gonna keep this going. I suppose I suppose some, you know, my family having a little something today. So but I'm be in and out, but I'm gonna be mostly there, mostly here. <laughs> you know, that mean, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Play most no games, man. Yeah, most yeah, they want to they want to play games. They don't play no games, nah, man. I, I mean, I, yo, I'm, I'm, yo, I'm in the zone today, man. I ain't feel it. I, I play, I, you know, I, 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 I let them show my, I show my face. That's it, man. But other than that, man, I. Oh yeah, yeah, man. We need to. Yeah. Yeah, the brother basement popped in, popped off again. Hold on, uh, pop back in there, basement. Yeah, but I, I see, I see. He was, um, his live was coming on like 220 i don't know that it still go on like that i don't know yeah i don't know see i didn't i didn't, I didn't get the link he didn't send me the link until just a, a little bit ago so that's why i put it on on my on mine because i didn't know because when i was talking to him i didn't have the access both ways so i was like yeah 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 you know yeah. we had to run, yeah. run through it like that, that hey it's a good brother basement box and talk in the building hey what time y'all doing the thing Hey, it's supposed it's supposed to be now, bro. They're supposed to jump on, man. But see, it was so last minute. I only reason I put it on this channel because we normally be on your channel. But when I was talking to him, I didn't have the link, and he need the link right now. If I didn't give it to him then, I wouldn't be able to. He wouldn't. We might not have got it. So I just went on and took it like that. That's the only reason, good brother. But I, normally we're gonna be on your channel on Saturdays at this time. That, that's that's just what that is. It just when um, the connection came through and we got to talking. Um, you know, he was like, "Yeah, well, get, give it to me now and everything like that." If I didn't, I, I, we couldn't guarantee he' gonna come on. So, you know, I had to make sure we got the link. You know, that's what's up. That's what's up. But uh, yeah, man, uh, they should be uh, uh, rolling in here, man, shortly, man. Cause uh, yeah, I just spoke to him just just like literally ten minutes before we hopped on here. Yeah, me and the right. trick, trick naughty man. I try to jump back in or something. I gotta do the show. Yeah, uh, can you can you tie it into the to your show? Yeah, let me uh let me see if I can stop stop this other one. He gonna have oh. some things. He gonna have some things to say, bro. He was cooking, man. I was stuck in the middle, like I couldn't get off. <laughs> like, I was like, man, come on, I was like, yeah, bro. bro I was gonna, I was gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna jump out and then jump back in and then I'm gonna jump in with my other phone. Okay. Okay. Oh man, yo, picture somebody said underrated man. You chat with the champion, yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, the champ, something else, man. The Philip yeah. man was, was man, I, I know, you, I man, know he was cooking, yeah, man. And, and and one of the biggest robberies, man, was him and uh, uh, Rafael Ruelas, man. When I mean, he oh. dropped that four times in that fight, man, and then uh, you yeah. know, I mean, I, that was crazy, man. You know, that showed you a little bit yeah, about is, the yeah. boxing and what goes on behind the scenes and everything and what these fighters have to go through, man. And why it's so yeah. important for, for people like ourselves who get on here and uh, take it upon ourselves to represent these guys and get their truth out so that the world know what really takes place yeah. and what's really going on behind the scenes. Yeah. When they, we just, we said yeah. style it, man. It's their narrative running around and everybody drinking it up like Kool-Aid, man. You know, you got people out here yeah, that yeah. Tyson Fury didn't cheat. I mean, what kind of madness is that? How in the hell could you not think so? And then just yesterday, you have the guy come out. Well, not yesterday, day before yesterday, have the same exact thing happen in that fight that was acute. Well, Tyson Fury was accused yeah. of that in his fight. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you got the gloves come directly from the factory, Janky. Come from the fact already. <laughs> they already that means they already got the right. devil told these people, hey, look, we want we don't want no pad in this. Mm -hmm. area. I can't hear like you. And that, I'm sorry. Where is my brother? Basement box. Can you hear his good brother? 
I can't hear you, bro. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. I'm going to jump out and come back in. I can't hear you. Okay. Okay. Man, one of what's going yeah, on. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, Dre finally said Trey beat the brakes off that Bama. Man, no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt, man. That's in the Tuesday night fight days, man, when they was having the, the rumble and tumble every, every Tuesday night. Yeah, you remember? You remember those man. days, bro? Man, I'm telling you, bro, I, I, I mean, cry tears when they, when they canceled the show, man. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear us, brother? Yeah, I can hear y'all now. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, we good money then. There we go. We got the good brother. Trick Nolte. Trick Nolte. What's up, Trick Nolte? Ah, the man with the story. What's shaking? What's shaking? What's good, fam? Man, y'all was telling a little bit of taste of what the check was talking about when we was talking to him just a little bit ago, man. He had some stuff to say, man. It's going to be something else. (laughs) Yeah, he he, um, he ain't chimed in yet. Not, not yet. Okay. I, I sent him the link in the email, so, you know, I mean, he old school like us, so he might take a little minute with that, man. I know it, it took me a minute to get acclimated to all this type of stuff, too, so. Yeah, let me, mm-hmm. let me, um, let me text y'all you hear me, quick. Y'all hear me saying that, that's because I got y'all mute. I'm, I be live on the radio. I got to play my intro and shit. Okay. All right. Got you, bro. Yes, indeed, man. Dre Finals. So yes, them was the days, man. Yeah, they got to bring them back, man. They should, P- man. PBC should be on that with, with with everything. PBC should be just breaking their necks, man, to make that happen, man. They should be having. Yo, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, PBC, get <laughs> if they hit to get that Tuesday night fight. It's done. The it's game is done. Rap, man. <laughs> That's that's the checkmate move right there. Once that move right there is put into place, man, yeah. PBC can shut the doors down because they got their own promotion. They can yeah. show all the up and coming fighters from the root all the way to their greatness, however they go. And when and you do that, say, yeah, everybody's gonna be intimate with with the product and with the brand and yeah. with all the fighters. And then, and then, then the two more grow. That's 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 what's needed, man. That's what's that's missing. what needed. And plus, in the two night fight, they could have they could have if they want to, they could have like like they um. Like they contenders, you know what I'm saying? Fight. Yeah. Top exactly. 10. All, you know what I'm saying? Psh, what? You can put some chapters once in a while. Yo, had them put had them in play. Oh my goodness. Yes, indeed. Game is all Mark Nash in the building, man. Salute, brother Mark Nash. What's going on, Mark Nash? We forgot about your boy, man. See a peace Word, trip. Exactly. Man. What's, What's up, Mark <laughs> man? What, what Mark Nash? What's good, fam? What's good? Thank you. Nah, you got me, yeah. man. You got me on the yes, indeed, man. Yeah, man. Hey, go Mark, with some... Mark, I might uh, send you a link, man. I got some uh, some ones that go out there, man. But hold tight, man. I might send you. I might send you one too, good brother. Yeah, yeah, man. So yo, support. Oh, I'm sorry. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and do that. Let me go ahead and do that, Mark. Mark, let me let me, let me send it out to you now, good brother. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Support the brother, Black Star Sports TV, man. He be bringing the goods. I just sent it to you them uh Mark Nash, bro. Check your email, good brother. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. man. Drake Fine says if PBC gets two tonight fights, it's a wrap. You dig, man. But big facts right there. Yeah. Big facts. It's, it's done. It's done. Yeah. yeah. You won't need no, you won't have to fight nobody nowhere else. Everything yep. can be kept in-house. Yeah, mm-hmm. and look at all, and look, yeah, all that money they be getting, <laughs> all that money. It's getting, after that, <laughs> gotta go. You know, with boxing, you think about the box had to go through PBC. <laughs> <coughs> That's big facts, man. That's big facts, and they, they, I mean, they could be there. They could just close up like the UFC have their own entity, their own ranking systems, their own the tournaments, their own belts, their own. <laughs> yep. They could be like, forget all that other stuff. This real boxing over here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. And plus, they got their own network too. That, that's for. T- I mean, you got we got Fox, FS1, yep. with FS2, F Sport. Them, I mean, how many F Fox Sports channels did they got? I mean, all yeah. the regular Fox. I mean, you got all that happening, man. I mean, 
you, you're right. fighting to get maximum exposure around the states. Yep. You can resurrect boxing in the United States all by yourself. You don't need none of that. You don't have to even worry about no top rank. Because, I mean, what top rank going to do? Look at the future of top rank anyway. It's it's fading out, man. It's fading. So, mm-hmm. Golden Boy is already mm-hmm. dead. You can already stick a fork in that. That's done. That's over. Ain't nothing left. Mm-hmm. PBC, man. Just well, go ahead and claim your rightful throne. Take it. Just go on and complete the takeover. Mm-hmm. Before you know it, ESPN be one of the best. Can we get a little piece, too? Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. Sure, you can. Y- y- y'all can get Friday. Y'all can crank up Friday night fight. Right. You got Friday on Friday. That's right. As long as you oh, say PBC. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, exactly. Another prayer, you know how we do it. Live at Clutch Studio. We here uh, with the YouTube panel. We got Black Star Sports TV in the building. What it do? We what got the rated one in the building. And we got What's Trick up, No up? Anthony Carter in the building. Uh... We're doing this show a little bit different today. My man Black Star supposed to have a special guest, so we're gonna kind of put the platform on him today. If you want, you can go on and speak, Black Star. Yes, indeed, good brother, man. Yeah, we was waiting on the champ to come in, man. We got the uh the former IBF world champion Freddie Pendleton in here, the fearless one, man, coming in this bad boy. He got some stuff to talk about too, some things to say. Man, he had me and, and, and Chick Man rolling on the phone just a while ago, man. <laughs> he had some stuff, man. So, hey, we're going to let him come up in here, man, and, and, and talk his talk, man. And, 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 you know, he didn't walk the walk. So, hey, he earned the right to talk the talk. So, we're going to let him go ahead and get it out, man, any way he want to get it out, man. And uh, it's going to be rememberable for sure, man. He's, he's a good uh-huh. guy, good character, hell of a champion, hell of a fighter, man. I mean, Look, I mean, he, he never never could ever accuse this man of ducking nobody. But the list is long of cats that want to duck him. <laughs> that right hand was no joke, man. He was the business, man. He gave the business to plenty of them, man. And he was, you know, hey, had a full career, man, and fought, I mean, a lot of the greats, man. I mean, you got Roger Mayweather, Pernell Whitaker. I mean, think about that, man. Just them two names mm-hmm. alone, man. What did he tell you about the guys that, that, that ducked him and didn't want to get in the ring with him, man? When he when he run down that list and you look at all these guys that, that are Hall of Famers and potential Hall of Famers that was responding to this guy like that. That's another reason. When you look at his record, man, and you, you say, well, man, he had all them losses. But look at the respect he garnished in the sport. Look what he accomplished, man. I mean, that's greater than the guy that's walking down the street 50 and 0 when they ain't fighting no damn body, you know? Right, exactly. We got to put more stock into that. And, and fighters like this is what we need to support more than anything. You know, that's one thing yeah. I give UK a little bit more credit. They're a little bit more balanced with that, man. They're, they're, if a guy get a loss, they don't trash a guy like that. They understand that it's, it's a competitive sport. Things can happen. But we tend to have a tendency to take a fight and throw him in the tray. He lost one time. He's no good. Get rid of him. You know, but uh-huh. it, ain't, it ain't that type of party, man. Oh, man, we got the good brother. I am ill will in the building, man. Salute to you, good brother. Yes, indeed, man. Yeah, we in here popping the chops off, bro. That's all we doing, man. Waiting on the champ to come in here, man, so we can talk this. But, uh, yeah, good to see you, good brother, man. Uh, let me know you want to link, good bro, because, hey, man, you know, we, you know, chopping up on this boxing, man. No thing about that at all. Uh, yeah, man, he fought Sweet Pea, man. It was a damn hell of a fight, man. A lot of people say he beat Sweet Pea in that fight, too. Yeah, I heard about that, too. A lot of people say that, too. Yeah. Yeah, that, I, mean, I mean, just think about that, man. That, that gives you a barometer to the way this brother uh, uh, was, is, and should be uh, represented in the, in the history of boxing, man. You can't forget about a guy like this. This guy was a little heartbeat of the sport. I mean, two night fights when Freddie Pendleton was on, you know, you had you automatically knew you had a hell of a fight when he came on it. You know, people always talk about uh, Arturo Gattis and guys like that that was out there. And Arturo did a lot of losing. <laughs> he, did, he did, again, in the big mm-hmm. fight. You got a guy here that actually beat some big guys, man. He took on Tracy Spann at the time. When Tracy Spann was was was, was shit, was the man. He, he was the champ. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Times, man, and, and and they went two for nail in them fights, man. And then you know, hey, the brother got the got the win in the second fight. But uh, you know, I don't want to give away everything, man. But he got a lot to tell you, man. I can't I can't fill in the blanks where he can fill you in. But we'll give you a little idea of who this brother is and, and and what he's done, man, and how we should should always remember. That's a good thing about my good brother here, Trick Nope, man. And Trick Nope came to me and said, "Hey, bro, Black Star, man, you know these these fighters, man. We need to bring these guys back up and everything." And he was explaining to me what he what he wanted to do that was in his heart, man. I was like, "Well, shoot, bro. Hey, man, anytime you want to bring one of them cats over here and do what you what you want to do, man, it's open for you, bro. So just let me know, and we'll we'll rock it from there, man." And 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 the good brother hit me up this morning, man, and, and we was like, "Hey." 
Let, let's do it. So hey, here we are, man, and uh, get this brother a chance to uh, tell his side, man. It, it, it's just it's something, man. And, and then all these, and then the thing is, man, when you meet these guys and you see how they are real people and their personalities come out, and you understand a little bit about the motive that drove them when they was fighting by their personality, you know, how they, how they talking shit and all that, you know what I'm saying? Cause you can, you can relate to them a lot more. You know, you got fighters today who are distant, you know, and I don't want to name names, but yeah, well, hell, yes, I am, Bud Crawford, you know, like that, he can't, he can't <laughs> stiff on you better than that mother. He gonna stiff on the shit out of you. He said, if you don't kiss my ass, I can't talk to you. That's how he rocking with you, you know? So, you know, hey, we don't kiss no ass, so ain't nobody need to talk to you, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Got the good brother underground asylum in the building, man. Salute my people in the panel. On the ground. Underground sound. What's going on, brother? What's going on, fam? Yes, indeed. Salute on the ground. Yes, indeed, man. Black Check Black Star told him to click on the link. He should be coming in. Okay, cool. Yes, indeed. Right. Yeah, man. He was he sounded like he was in a talking mood too, man. You know how uh us, us older heads to do, man. We get we get the once the motor yeah. cranked up, we get to saying a few things, man. It's all from, it's on the popping at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes, especially me. I I I can go on hours, especially the great conversation. That's on. Yes, indeed, man. We got Shy Town's finest in the building, finest. man. Yep. Salute to the good brother, man. Yes, indeed. Love and peace, fam. Peace, love. Yes, indeed. Right peace. back. To peace. peace to Shy Town, no doubt. Man, yes, indeed, bro. Yeah, man, it's always good for the brother to come through, man. I know he be busy, man, working and uh, grinding in that medical field, man. That brother got a very important job, man, and uh, I, uh, I'm i glad he had time to come through, man. It's always good when the brother come through, man. Uh, your brother, Jay Fines, did you get the cash? Oh, hold on, bro. I didn't get no uh, – hold on, let me check that, bro. Yeah, my notification ain't pop on. Or something, bro, let me mm-hmm. check that, bro. Yeah, you gotta hear that clink, 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 clink. Yeah, man. I'm like, hey, is this thing on? Is this thing on? Oh, yes, we did. Oh, hey, thank you, good brother uh, Dre Finest, man. Appreciate your support for the channel, man. And with that, well, I can't do the, the KQKC, man. But I need to record that, man. Just play, hit that button, boom, let him sing that one time. You know what I mean? Can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't hit that note, man. Yeah. <laughs> I need me something like that. My brother got the underrated, got the, un- the number one grinder. And then he and my, my brother uh, did the same, There man. you go. Come on, man. <laughs> hey, I like that you joint, you, though. Yo, no, yo, you like try. Y'all, 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 you know what? Everybody love when I do that, so I can't stop now. You know what I mean? No, no, you hey. can't, you can't. That's it, bro. Hey, hit it one time for it, underrated. Oh no! Come on, man! Y'all trying to make a brother make like like a celebrity status? Huh? All right, I'll hey. do it for you. Uh, all right, let me. I, I, I gotta do this right, yo. What, yo? Check out my channel, The Underrated Darkness. Um, today, you know, after this, it's gonna be six six o'clock p.m. The Underrated, The Underrated Boxing Talk. You know, like channel the under the underrated one, the number one grinder. That's what's up, yo. That's what it is. Six o'clock p.m. today. After yeah. this, it's going down. But right now. Boom, we have Black Star Sports TV with with the one and only base the basement boxing talk. Then you know, yes, on trick trick noty and everything, man. This is where it's at, y'all. Y'all talking about support the cause. This is what you gotta do. You gotta support this. Keep it rolling. Yes, indeed, man. Dre Fines, appreciate that, brother. 100 percent Salute Mike 202, man. I, I hit you back, man. You ain't never hit me back. Mm. Oh, oh, Mike too. Yeah, bro. It's uh, some funny about that Trinidad fight. Yeah, he gonna talk about that too, bro. Mm, that too. You know what? Yeah. I always, I, I, I meant to, I meant to um ask you about that a few minutes ago, but it slipped my mind about that Trinidad fight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, but I'm, man, I'm, we, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna let the champion hit that. I'm gonna let the champion yeah. hit that. Man, we could do a show from some of the fighters that we heard stories about Trinidad. Man, it kind of a little bit make me. Look at Trinidad a little different, a little bit. A little, man. Little, little, yeah, a little just, iffy, iffy, man. Yeah, just a little bit. You know, I was a you know, big fan of Trinidad. I like Trinidad, man. But now you kind of look and say, man, you know, was that a secret behind but you, all but, that? You, but but you know what? Um, somebody told me years ago that Trinidad say some about about us as a people in Spanish was not was not was 
not good. Oh, really? Yeah, somebody, I, some, yeah, somebody told me years ago. This is how I was living in New York. Yeah, man, see that, see that, that kind of thing make you put them in a the trash can when they do stuff like that, man. I, don't, I, don't got, <laughs> I ain't got no tolerance for that. Exactly. Bro. I, yeah, you but know? see, this is what I'm saying. I live in New York, so when I was born and raised in New York, you know, we know some people. <laughs> I, 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 hey. I don't get off the subject. We know some people who say some some grimy stuff like that. Yeah, man. Got the good brother Mark Nash in the building. What it do, brother? What what up, what up, Mark? What up, Mark hey, Nash? So we should have been brother. have Mark in the building another few nights when we was talking that Terrence Crawford shit. That's who we needed in the building. <laughs> That's who we needed in the building. Mark, Mark, you were ducking that smoke, was you, bro? That don't sound like you, man. <laughs> hey, Mark. Right. What's up? What's up? Hey, what's up, Mark? We, <laughs> well, you need you need to been in the chats the last few days, brother. We've been missing you. Check one, two. How y'all feel out there? Y'all hear me? We good, Yeah, bro. we hear you. Yeah, What's up? Yeah. Well, first and What's foremost, up, I just want to say uh, thank you uh, guys for having me on. It means a lot to me and my audience, man. Um, salute to the chat, man. What's poppin', man? It's your boy Martin Nash, artist, producer, engineer, songwriter, based here in Atlanta, Georgia. And, um, yeah, we're here to talk a little bit boxing today. Oh, yeah, and I want to salute you. Thanks for, thanks for continuing to support the channel, brother. I appreciate you. Absolutely, man. Hey, look, I always tell people, look, we don't got to agree on everything. Shoot, I don't agree with my wife on everything. I don't agree with my mama in there on everything. I don't agree with my one-year-old daughter on everything. But as long as we show love and respect, man, we can always grow and um and continue to progress as a people and, and more importantly as a culture and a family. You know what I'm saying? Because we guys are mm -hmm. we are a community and we are a family. Mm -hmm. No doubt. No doubt. Mm -hmm. Hey, hold yo, bro, you got a split. Hold up, bro. You got a split right there. I can smoke this. I can smoke you got a split. fat. You got a fat. You got a fat yeah. one, dog. Bro, bro, look, man. Let me. Yo, you bringing out the old school split, dog? Dad, you gonna make me Let's see? Let me get this thing started start. right there. Let me go and roll this. Yep. Get this thing. No, 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 yo, yo. So, can I, can I get my drink on at least, Bro, I got my little red one right here. Look, I, every time I try to hit it, <laughs> yo, I usually do like this. I go, my <laughs> hey, Black Star. Somebody uh got me on cam. I be like, hold up, bro. I, I feel you on that one. <laughs> yo, <laughs> see, see, see. Y'all gonna make me pull out my, my cam. See, y'all gotta make me pour out my bourbon then, you know, my cinnamon bourbon, you know what I mean? Oh, that's spicy. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, you don't need no chasing or nothing. You just, you know, you put that on ice. You put that on ice. Just a little, ice, little ice, that's it. Little ice. One, yo, about three, three, four cubes, that's it. Well, I just want to tell you guys, thank you again for having me on. It's truly a pleasure and an honor. Um, I think I was talking to Trick on IG, and he told me he was like, "Go!" But I just got the alert that you went live anyway, and he was like, uh, "Go to Black Star Channel." You know what I'm saying? I was like, "Oh yeah, I follow Black Star already." But um, yeah, man, I like your graphics. Black Star it looks nice. It looks bright. It's popping. You know what I'm saying? You can yeah, see everything man. big on screen. Yeah, my good brother, uh, get feel me on them tips, man, because he, you know, he he be helping brothers out man he hooked up my, my good brother rap stars man got him looking all coming up like seven up man on his joint he come through last night shining on everybody man oh, with his new logo with his yeah, new logo awesome man yeah we still working <laughs> on a couple little things on that logo i just want to tweak for him i had to scoot the star over just a smidge it but um yeah that little w with the star on top i told him man i said um you got a deal for this brother you know what i'm saying a lot of people uh pay hundreds and if not thousands of dollars for you know to get a logo or get somebody to give them music and an intro like his intro gonna be fake watch when i finish that up you see the you should i should have it to him yeah man Tuesday. that's what i'm saying man we gotta link up on that there man yeah, so, yeah, my intro. Got, yeah yeah we gotta link up on that let's do it let's do it y'all already know that's what i do man i love to uh yeah, my intro my... sir oh yeah 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 i said you ever heard my intro I think when your show starts, she's always in the middle when I pull up. You already started. But I, mm. and I don't never rewind it because I don't want to miss what you're saying in the live. So I guess I need to catch the replay and see how it, how it pop off. You did it yourself? No, no, no. Prince Bob did it. That's what's up. This, no, this, is, this is good, y'all. Cinnamon bourbon, y'all. Oh, this is great. I'm going to try that, man. You had a good, <laughs> hey, uh, man, you had a good show the other day, too, when I timed in. I was like, oh, he mad at me now. I was like, <laughs> he mad at me. I said, and I was trying to get in, but I was feeding my daughter that morning, man. And by the time we got done and I cleaned her up, she had grits all in her hair and her face. By the time oh, I was ready to chime in, y'all was done. I think he was coming back with another show later that day. Yeah, but I missed that morning show, man. But you, we was talking about 
laziness. And it was a good. Episode, oh yeah, man. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I want. Yeah, 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 yeah man. It, I think um, I think I'm thinking about doing a continuation on that, man. I'm very seriously thinking about doing. Yeah, that round table conversation you had, bro. Like it was so good. I didn't even. I wanted to get in, but like I said. I, I was kind of enjoying it more. That's why I just sent a contribution, like keep cooking. You know what I'm saying? But I really I wanted to come that. up there. But you know, my my daughter, man, she she don't she don't play with my time. That's why I got to do my broadcast at ten o'clock because <laughs> I got to put her down, yeah. and then I need to get myself together and set it up. But um, man, she don't play, man. She don't play with daddy. Like she'll be if I, she will be right here sitting on my lap or knocking at that door, beating at the door with something. Uh, or just fall mm -hmm. out and start crying. You know what I'm saying? Oh, thank you, mm -hmm. man. Shout out to He's uh, Mark threw down on that mic on Mike's channel. Yeah, yeah Mike actually man. got a custom verse. Yeah, yeah, he, man. He, he he polished him up on a on on a whole professional level. I said, man, his brother on a whole other level, mm -hmm. man. I see him with the with the intro. I can't get the motion like that in my intro, man. So I, that's what I'm lacking. I, I got to push a little. You know, I'm primitive with my skills, but I'm working on it. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Uh, it's apps yeah. out there, man. I can help you with that, or I can uh, assist you yeah. with, uh, any way possible, bro. You know what I'm saying? Just hit me up before 10. You know what I'm saying? Because I go 10 Monday through Friday. But um, I, I try you, to do, bro. I'm going to do pop-up shows here and there, but I just want to be consistent. This was the first week that I was consistently doing it at a certain time and said, I'm not going to move. I'm not going to budge for nothing. I'm doing this at 10. The only thing I buzzed off for was that versus. I started an hour early. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, man, mm -hmm. I just had to. And I don't want to go all night, neither. I don't want to do no three, four-hour shows. I want to do like an hour, maybe two at the max. So 10 to 12, maybe 10 to 10.30, 10, 10, 11. But I'm not going to go over two hours because I want to start on time. And I want to keep people coming back. But more importantly, around that time, I need to be doing other things. You know what I'm saying? Prepping for the next day, getting my... You know, I got mm -hmm. I got a pit bull. If I don't feed her, she gonna feed, she gonna feast off me, man. <laughs> so, uh, so I just try Thanks, to just man. stay active. Make sure I spend time with my wife. Make sure I'm still doing my uh, affirmations. You know what I'm saying? Studying, but more importantly, I'm out here trying to help people one channel at a time, man. One episode at a time, bro. So I got a lot of work coming in, but um, I thank God for it because uh, sometimes you ask you ask for things, but then once it started happening, you like slow down but nah it ain't no slowing True. down you ask yeah for I, it? I, I, go ahead did you get it yes indeed yeah man. oh yeah i made a drink up too i'm gonna let you know when you come to my channel later on too <laughs> so you got a little bit of everything on the underrated one see you know, i made it i made it i made a drink it's in it it's in, yo, it's in the refrigerator yeah, it's in the refrigerator. I'm not. I'm not taking it out yet. Till 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 I start later on. That's when I take it out. <laughs> Did you guys? Um, yeah, man. Gotta hey, break that point out, man. See. Did you guys hear about the, mm -hmm. uh, the the padding? I heard somebody somebody just sent something on my line talking about the padding in California. They found the dude in there about the box with no padding. Did y'all talk about that yet? Yeah, yeah, man. That that was the thing, man. You know the very same thing that we've been saying for months now that Tyson Fury did. Somebody else did it exactly the way that we said it was done the first time. Same way. And yeah. then never, no, none yeah. of the, the public uh, media, nobody wants to talk about that. They just kind of just flip the page on it and just walk off like it ain't never happened. But it happened, and when we ain't gonna get get our feet off the gas on it. We're gonna let everybody know, yeah, we saw that, we called that, and we knew that was what's going on. And that's been verified, so it can't nobody mm -hmm. ever say, oh, well, that can't happen. It's impossible. No, it happened. It did happen. And that's why... Uh, that's how I agree with you on Black Star. I hate when people say it can't happen. It's it's too yeah. much going on. I was like, bro, you ever been to a magic show? You think that man really cut the woman in half and put it back together? No, it's an illusion. It's foolery with the jewelry. You ever seen somebody play three card Monty? There you go. You you can never win mm -hmm. if you're playing three card Monty. If it looks like you about to win, we got people sitting, bro. We about to end this game. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so, like, right. but let's be clear. I don't. This it's very rare that the commission catches people. Think back. It's always the trainer that we hear about. Somebody else catching it prior to. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I think is we got to be clear on that. They they would never admit they wrong after the fight because it's too much money involved. It's bets that's been placed. I told people that. I said they can never admit they wrong and overturn this because that means if I had a Deontay Wilder betting slip, you, I can bring that back to Vegas and you got to pay me. 
They're not gonna do that. Mm-hmm. Boston never did right by the Collins family. You know, Billy Collins and his family. When he fought Resto, they, yep. they admit, you know, granted, Resto went to jail. Uh, Panama was banned for life, but they never did right by the Collins family. That man never fought again. Never. They never did right by him. So, boxing, we got to do an episode one day, man. And I would love to do it with guys like you because you guys are respectful gentlemen. Y'all not in here trolling. I don't like how y'all, what you just said about Bud Crawford, but I don't know the man personally. You might be right. <laughs> but we got to do an episode about cleaning up our sport, man. Because the sport uh, needs to be cleaned up. And just put go, that on man. the thumbnail. And yeah, that's one of the things we talked about with the champ, man. Champ wanted to talk about that too, man. So as we, 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 uh, let's we get him on here, man. But hey, hey, y'all brothers chop it up a little bit, man. I'm going to hit up a trick note and see what's going on. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, I'm going to let everybody know we yeah. live on Proof yeah. Radio here with the YouTube panel. This your boy, Basement Boxing Talk. We got the, uh, YouTube panel, Black Star TV. We got the underrated one. And we got my man, Mark Nash. Mark Nash in the building from the ATL and your boy Basement Boxing Talk. And we're here chopping it up on Clutch Radio on the YouTube channel. And uh, we probably had special guests, but we check and see what's going on with that. Hey. We about two two weeks down to Spence and Garcia. I'm yes, excited. Sir. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. I'm, I'm, Me too. Hey, look, I'm excited about see uh Gay Rosado versus Danny Jacobs, man. Cause I like I like the pre fight. Mm. I'm excited. You know why I'm excited? Ask hold me. on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna say this real quick, and then I'm gonna pass you the mic. Speak on it, King. Rosado. That's all I'm gonna say. Mm -hmm. You, you happen to see? Hold on, man. Yes. When the when the last time Rosado won? It ain't about him winning. He bleeds. He gets busted up, man. That, come My, on, man. Man, that's, this, listen, this, bro. Listen, man. Let me say something. He, he, every fight, every <laughs> yes. fight, he busted up. Look, that's why, no fight for Danny Jacobs. Go ahead, go this ahead. No fight. There's no fight for Jacobs. My man, let me say something. Go bro. ahead, man. I'm gonna let you run this because I, 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 I got some heat for your ass. No, 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 no! You ain't got to give me too much because this is a little comedy, but it's it's a little real thing. It's a, it's a little realness in this. I was telling somebody the other day. I was like, man, I'm really excited about uh seeing Gabe Rosado fight Danny Jacobs. They was like, why? I said, cause the bet is gonna be on what round he gets stopped in. With all the cuts, he's gonna get stopped on cuts nine times out of ten, bro. He's a bleeder. He 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 yeah. has a lot of scar tissue. Basement boxing talk. Why does he keep getting booked for fights and he keeps losing? Because it's gory. People pay to see that. It's uh, it's drama. Like Larry Merchant with his crazy ass used to say, excuse, no disrespect, but I'm just saying, he used to say boxing is the theater of the unknown. But the one known thing you're going to know tonight is Gay Rosado's going to bleed. He going to put the blood on. People come to boxing to see knockouts and people get busted up. You come to see a fight. That's why he keeps getting booked. He got all that scar tissue. He want to get in there and fight? Shoot, give him some money. He got it. He can talk before the fight. He got a look. He got that attitude, that Philly attitude, that grime. Man, he was in the Rocket, the, the Creed movie. Bro, people like Gay Rosado because he bleeds and he gets cut up and he keeps trying. He don't be getting knocked out and getting beat up like that. He just, they got to stop it because he he can't see no more. But it's entertaining while it lasts, bro. That's all I'm saying. I like to okay. see a good scrap. I would watch Gay Rosado fight. Every week on every week on Tuesday, if on a Tuesday I would be watching Gay Rosado compared to that fight we just saw the other day when the dude got robbed in the second round. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see stuff like that. And those hey, things man. don't happen with Gay Rosado because Gay Rosado would still be fighting with that closed eye and and making it competitive. Uh, listen, I understand what you're saying. Kill me in the comments, y'all. Go ahead. <laughs> Go I, 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 I understand what you're saying about the blood and all that. I understand all that, man, but. Man, just for the sake of boxing, man, Danny Jacobs, man, was a world champion, man. This is this 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 is not a step forward for him. This is a step back. I agree. Now I can see if it was somebody else fighting Rosado. Come on now, yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Maybe maybe somebody who was stepping up in weight. You feel me? I can see like I can see like yeah, that's cool. But man, I can't I can't go for Danny Jacobs, man. Danny Jacobs mm. need to be in there with Charlo. Danny Jacobs need to, to be that. in there. 
He need to be in there with Demetrius Andre. Yeah. He need to be in there with Kale Platt. Come on, man. But the point is, he is he will is he will is he willing to um do that in in you know, the stage of his well, career? He now. has to. I mean, listen, to, to, this this is going this is what's going. He's not a Hall of Famer right now. I don't know about that. That's true. You think Danny Jenkins is I the agree with player? that? We had this argument the other right? day, man. I don't know if you guys and um somebody. I said a statement. I'm gonna I'm say something to you. And I'm, matter of fact, let me ask you guys this. And I'm gonna run this down with y'all. I'm gonna do the same thing with you guys. But when I did it last time on the live, the guy came on and he said, "Martinez, you wasn't fair with that." Like, cause even by your own analogy, blah blah blah. So I'm gonna ask y'all this real quick: Is Terrence Fr is Terrence Crawford a Hall of Famer right now? To you guys' opinion? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm I'm say that because because three division champ, division. Under, three divisions, undisputed, yeah. undefeated, yeah. knockout artist. See yeah. what you want? He's a knockout artist at that point. We gotta call him that. Listen to this. This is it. He's, he's a Hall yeah, of Famer. I with, say, I, uh, I say he's a Hall of Famer right now. With with I'm gonna say this, he's a Hall of Famer with maybe the uh what's the right words I wanna say? His resume is not as strong as a lot of other Hall of Famers. It will but I'm I, I, saying if one at this last weight is what you mean, right? Because right, right. Cause right. He, at his last weight. At one forty seven, okay. at so one forty seven. But we all know one thirty five, one forty, Terrence Crawford, he definitely in the Hall of Fame. He went overseas definitely. and took it off the man just like Spence. Yeah, so, he, he, he definitely, he definitely, he definitely on the Hall of Fame. He definitely on the Hall of Fame. All right, so now is uh, Sean Porter a Hall of Famer? Yeah, yeah, Un I can underrated say one. Is he a Hall of Famer? Sean. Yes. You know why yes, I say man. that? He is, man. Give it you, to him. You know, you know, you know why I say he that? Be a B and AB is a multiple multiple division champ. He be AB. Oh. He be Birdo. Like he be uh he be, he took yeah. the belt off of Malinaji. Like he he fought. He had a tough. He had a close fight he, with Thurman. Close fight with uh he beat Danny. You get what I'm saying? Had a close fight his with resume. His yeah. resume. He, he, he won the big fight. Not even his resume. He, he, it's the wins. Period. Oh yeah, the, the wins. wins. And but, when he beat him, Sean Porter never backed down from a fight. He didn't fought everybody in the one forty seven division. I always when people say somebody back down, I always say we got we got to be clear and relative because we don't know all the intricate details of, of the contract unless we saw it. I understand that, and that's fair because people would say I because some people would say I'm Wilder Doug AJ, no, but, no. and I was like Wilder didn't Doug AJ. He made a bit different business decision. Mm -hmm. Some people say AJ Doug Wilder because he asked for the fifty, but but then it was like, well, you got to come over here. He never knew he he didn't know the coming over there was with the fifty. So it's always intricate things in contracts and. We got to respect that. It is a business first. It's called a business of boxing. We ain't just in the backyard, just niggas betting duffel bags of cash, you know? So, so my, go ahead, underrated. I'm sorry. But No, I didn't mean to cut you up, but I could tell you one thing because I had that, I had that um, conversation about um, Sean Porter last year, and there's quite a few people. They don't think he's he's not a Hall of Fame. I said, "Will you?" He he. he won. I said, "When you ask a person, when hold hold on, y'all hold on." You, I said, when you ask a person when big fights, most of the time he did. So well, you look. And you, and I said, mm. I said, look at his resume. So you got some people that nah, he's not Hall of Fame. We getting there. Say that. Hold up, big dog. We get. Hey, big dog. You got to explain there. that to me. So we getting there. Y'all getting close, and I like how y'all are participating in the chat. Let me know who y'all think. Isn't isn't a Hall of Famer in boxing, all right? And so, because it started off with we was the guy made me change my own opinion about my own analogy. So we went through all of this. Basically, everybody in my uh, on the panel with design with me was saying yes to Crawford, but they said no. Spence wasn't a Hall of Famer. They said Sean wasn't a Hall of Famer. They said uh, uh, they said none of these guys, these champions, right? Even Danny uh, unified at one point, right? He didn't undisputed, but Danny was unified, right? I mean, not Danny. Uh, yeah, yeah, Danny Garcia. Wasn't he unified at 140? Did yeah. he unify, right? So they, mm -hmm. they did say Mikey Garcia was a Hall of Fame already because of the weight, because he went through those divisions. Because of those divisions that he went through. Three divisions? Yeah, they gave him like three divisions. Bro, some people don't. Okay, so, so did so, this. 
So hold on. So my whole point, I'm going to just say this to land my plane. Because I know it took us a long time to get here, but we about to board, uh, unload the plane. And y'all tell me what y'all think. How can uh, a champion, an undefeated champion, like uh, who did you say wasn't? Somebody said Danny Jacobs, right? Danny Jacobs is a two-time champion, right, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah. He's a two-time champion. He's fought Triple G, came up a little short, right? You know what I'm saying? Fought Canelo, came up short, right? No, he didn't fight. Yeah, he did fight Canelo, came up short. And the other only loss was uh, what was the guy uh, who stopped him earlier, right? When he just when he was young, when his grandma died, when he had to break. That's the only. Those his only three losses, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, I'm gonna check on that. I yeah, know. I think uh, I think his name was Dimitri Bevel or something like that. Or oh, I might be missing it. But it was a big, strong dude. He knocked him out. He, and Danny Jacobs eyes rolled back. And the way they and the way sidebar the way they stopped Danny Jacobs. That's how they should have did it Tyson Fury when his eye, when he did like that. Could the referee wait off? He was like, no. He was like, I, he was explaining. He was like, man, I was just closing my eyes, getting myself together. Like, all right, let's do this. But the referee thinks I'm seriously hurt, so he stopped it. But and when you see it, I can see some of the referee. He was like, no, no, no. And he was like, he was like, nah, nah, lay down. He was like, man, nah, I was good. Like he's, you can see him trying to explain instantly. My whole point is, how can Rocky Balboa be in the Hall of Fame, but Danny Jacobs is not? <laughs> I'll wait. Kill me in the comments. How can Rocky Balboa, who ain't even a real person, be in the Boxing Hall of Fame? And you're going to tell Danny Jacobs, nah, man, you ain't did enough. You're a two-time fucking champion, man. What are we talking about here? Like, you got niggas in the Hall of Fame who ain't never threw a jab in their life. Okay, listen to this. Adrian Broner Hall of Fame? Yes! Okay, okay. Yes! I, he I like a four time, ain't he like a four or five time champ? Five, four time four champion? Time. How many four, weight divisions? Four time champ, four different weight divisions? Yeah. I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure. Though, Rocky Ball Bell, Bell I'm, that's my that's my drum, and I'm going to beat it to the to, till I break the stem. If Rocky Ball Bell Boy is in the Hall of Fame, you can't tell me Danny Jacobs ain't in the Hall of Fame. Did y'all tell y'all kill me in the comments. What, what y'all think about that? Let me mute my cam so I can lean close and look. He got the camera too close now. I need a shave, man. It got got it dug down. They got the camera all closed. <laughs> Let me see what some of these comments say. Somebody, somebody, Mike, my man Mike said that's for white people. Hall of Fame is a popularity contest. It's subjective to opinions. Hall of Fame is bullshit. But a lot of these guys, that's what they want to do, man. Even in football, basketball, you hear these guys, they talk about it, man. When they say, I want to be great, I want legacy, they want to be a Hall of Famer. They want to do I something mean, that they can be remembered for forever, that they, their legacy can be built on shit. They write books and movies about. They study. Yes, man, Hall of Fame matters, man, because that means people I, are still I, talking about you later. I'm sorry. I'm just commenting to the commenters. Go ahead. No, I got something to respond to you. Shot town Finest said Rocky is in, is in the Hall of Fame for what he did for boxing, like an analyst that gets in the Hall of Fame for what they did, what they did, or like a promoter. Sports identify is identify with the sport. I guess that was your answer to uh, why Rocky in there. All those other people he named was real people. An analyst is a real person. A lot of times, an analyst has experience, so they can analyze something. It's a difference between somebody doing color commentary and an analyst. Let's start <laughs> there, right? So. Y'all can we do y'all agree with me on that? Can the church say amen? I, yeah, I agree. Uh yeah. So color commentary is different. You know what I'm saying? Versus a sports uh or or a reporter. Like Larry Merchant was a sports reporter. That's where he started. And then from there, he in journalism, that's different. I can understand that. But a fictional character is in the Hall of Fame. And I can understand inspiration behind the story. But when a fiction look, you're not gonna put so by that definition, we should put the monsters in the box in the basketball hall of fame. Should like Mike be in there? Bow Wow should be in the uh with the like Mike sneakers should be in the hall of fame in basketball. Think of that logic. Yeah. When I when I say it that way, you like well, uh, uh, nah, you being funny. <laughs> should we put that uh the, what's the dog that, that was in there? The spud. What's the joint when they put the sneakers on the dog and the dog could play basketball? You get what I'm right. saying? Should he be in the Hall of Fame because he inspired people to play basketball? 
What, bro, don't play with me, man. Stop playing with me, bro. I like you, Shot Town, and I don't want no problem with Shot Town. You know what I'm saying? I already know how y'all get down. I got love. I got people over there. But, man, everybody in Shot Town, they know Martin Nash. They know I love y'all. But that's wrong. That's wrong, bro. Come on now. How you going to tell a man that went in there and actually won two champions in real life versus a person that you can go on YouTube right now and see how the fight is choreographed? A story. Yes, it's inspirational. It's motivational. But, bruh. You can't you can't tell the other guy who's a two time champ that he shouldn't be in there. That's what I'm saying. You got guys in the Hall of Fame that didn't even win no championship and you don't and, and or no title and you don't know who they are. You know what I'm saying? That was when things were different too. Like you said, it's about your accomplishments, but it's also about your impact and your achievements. But we can't deny this guy's uh, achievements and his impact. His check said, bro. You know what I'm saying? Let's be real. They mad at me, bro. It's all good. <laughs> they mad at you, bro. All right, all right. <laughs> oh, shout out! No, shout out! Not ain't shout out. Said he, 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 he said, you know what, Mark? I'm with you. He said the actor Sylvester Stallone was inducted for how well he promoted the sport of boxing. But I'm with you, bro. I got it. Yeah, man. So yeah. shit. So so okay. So one day I could be in the Hall of Fame. Then if I do great with this YouTube shit, right, I should be inducted in the Hall of Fame. Might as well. Cause I'm gonna promote boxing. Black Star. Let's do it for the Hall of Fame, man. That's what we're doing it for. Underrated one basement boxing talk gonna be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> we going to the Hall of Fame with this shit, just like Sylvester Stallone. Cause all I gotta do is promote the sport, right? right. I ain't even gotta be a promoter. Right. So so that means that they deny us. We go and say, whoa, 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 you put Sylvester Stallone in the Hall of Fame. Man, this is a topic, bro. Hey, yeah, we're going to do this subject. Who, who go is down in the analyst. Hall of Fame? Let's get it one day, bro. We're going to we gonna go down as analysts, like Larry Merchant. And you know, Larry Merchant, he, yeah, he, hmm. we, ain't talk, <laughs> we ain't talking about that for one night, man. And you'll maybe get another drink on this month. Man. Larry Merchant, <laughs> yo, Larry Merchant, I used to ask my mom, I was like, why is he saying that? I was like, I was like, does he know? Didn't he see that guy? Mama was at the front row. Do he know we still recording live on? Hey, bro. <laughs> hey, look. Larry Merchant would be like this. He won't even be looking at the fighter. The fighter is right here looking at Larry like this. <sighs> you know, just had a tough win, right? So um, he was like, so, so hold on, hold on. Let me get my jokes off. Let me get these jokes off. Let me get these jokes. <laughs> he be like, well, first and foremost, Larry, I just want to thank God for the opportunity. It was a tough bout. I thank God. I got I got the stoppage right there at the end. I just want to thank my kids. Everybody watching back home in North Carolina. Okay, okay, okay. Listen, listen. He looked like he had you knocked out on your feet a lot in that fight. It looked like he got a lucky shot in right there. How do you what do you say to the people to say, hey, you got a lucky stopping in? He'd be like this. His smile drops off his face. He's like. You can see the motherfucker start getting mad at Larry in the ring. <laughs> Larry don't even let you thank your thank God in your mom. All right, all right, listen. Your promoter had to do a lot of things to get you for this. I heard I heard you had to sell your uh your kidney to him to to get this fight. Um, and then you got knocked out. I mean, he just beat you up and you got a lucky shot in. And the ref like I'll be like, Larry, why are you saying that? Why are you saying that? We can hear you. He just people are still watching. People boo Larry sometimes. Larry be like, and during the fight, Larry will say things. Well, we should have been watching another game right now. Uh, I think the Patriots are playing and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like these dudes were the worst, bro. They made people not like boxing. Yeah, him he, and um yeah. her, uh, and Lampley went when he left. Lampley became him. I was like, they just moved the characters over. You like Simon Cowell now. Yeah, man. I don't know remember, how. I don't... Remember him and Floyd got into it? Yeah, a lot. Hey, Floyd, so man, you don't know nothing about boxing? Best right. shit ever. I and, just, I just. And that comes from years of him doing that. Bro, if you got the time, watch it, and you go through, just go through. I might do it. I might do it. I might make a chop of that all Larry Merchant's interviews with Floyd right after the fight. And you can see Floyd when he was younger and shy. And he was like, well, well, 
he was like, well, Floyd, you're not here to promote. He's like, I just want to, you know, thank Grant Boston and, and, you know, Fenton. He was like, well, you're not here to promote, Floyd. We're here to do. He was like, well, well, I just I just want to speak my piece. And, um, you know, and little by little, it just escalated and escalated and escalated. And he just yeah. got tired of it. Because even in that interview, you can see what he was. He started off with his arm around Larry. And then he was talking about it. And he was like, man, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then little by little, his arm goes around, from off of Larry. And then, and he, then start he start wiping, wiping his, face. his face. He start wiping he start his right. face. He looked over at, over his leftover. Looked at Leonard Ellaby. Looked over a little Hello? bit. Looked at looked at um. Uh, yes. What's the, what's the, huh? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, he looked at Ellaby. He looked at uh Schaefer, and that's when he was like, "All right, well, let's look at it. Let's watch." And then he he watched the interview. He watched the replay game. He was like, "All right, so we come together. All right, all right." Right hook, I mean left hook, right hand. That's all she wrote. <laughs> and he was like, "Well, Floyd, well it seemed like you had him beat. What do you say to people? Say you didn't, you, you didn't have to do that. You win the fight. Like, I, I look, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna let you go talk to Virgil. Uh, I'm gonna let you go talk to Ortiz. I'm gonna let you go. They get somebody else up here to do me an interview. HBO, HBO, fire yard, fire yard. You don't know shit you about boxing. You don't know shit about boxing. You ain't shit. You ain't shit. Yeah. Come on, bro. Come I on, almost bro. know that shit know verbatim, that shit verbatim, right? right? Underrated. I'm underrated. hearing myself I'm hearing twice, myself over, twice there, over there, bro. Go ahead, basement Boston talk. Nah, it's cool. Wait, wait. Yeah, wait. Yeah, man. But I was just saying, bro. Th I believe bad commentary is is bad for the sport, bro. Like you can, yeah, I understand you got to do your job, but j I never hear that on Showtime when they just talk about somebody stinking up the joint. They'll call it a competitive chess match, or they'll just, they will call it how they see it, though, like just because somebody ain't getting knocked out. But they'll say, hey, man, this guy's what is he doing over here? Like, he needs to do this. He needs to try to. But they're not going to be up there saying, these guys are really stinking up the joint tonight, huh? Like, th that's what they send to the commentary on HBO. Like, like people and people go with those narratives, you know? So even with the scorecards, like. I don't even like when they doing that no more because I think that leads to, that's leading the witness because a lot of times people don't know what they watching if they don't know boxing. Hey, listen, I'm glad you I'm glad you made that point too because if you go back and um uh, Lomachenko and um Lopez fight and you listen to the commentating on that fight, Bradley was going for Leo. And uh, Andre Ward was going for Lomachenko. And all of a sudden, when the seventh round came, the commentary switched. And I'm like, man, do you hear this shit? Now, all of a sudden, Ward is going for Lomachenko. I mean, uh, Bradley going for Lomachenko. And now Ward is going for Lopez. And it was just like... Hmm. I, I don't, we just I, seen, we just seen. Everybody agree. The first seven rounds was Lopez. Me, I gave the second round to Leo, uh, to uh, Lomachenko. But it was just funny how they they switched the commentary to now to, to make you think when they went to when they went to the um, to the decision and they start Andre's card. He had it down as a draw. I'm like, man, how the fuck did he have it a draw? I had but that's what the I bet on T.O. and I had him winning that fight. And the whole time I was texting my boy who was in, um, I think he was in Bali for his honeymoon. And I was texting him because he can't see the fight over there, right? And I'm texting him the scorecards. And he was like, it was text. It was like uh, another round for T.O. Another round. So at one point he actually called me like the round f five or six, and he was like, "Bro, I just keep getting the same text, bro. What's going on?" I was like, "Oh, that's what's going on. These are the rounds." <laughs> he was like, oh, "Okay." Right. So he went in like that. I was like, "On my car, bro. He 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 blowing them out right now." It was round five or six or something. I was like, "He's winning damn near every." I gave him every round. I didn't give uh, Loma that second round for those, that those two quick little those two quick shots. I felt like To controlled most of the round. You know, it's three minutes, bro. Like I can't give you the round for a, a a good ten a good three to ten seconds, bro. I'm I'm explaining to you why why I did that when you get finished. But I just knew he didn't throw no he wasn't throwing no punches. He was doing a lot of uh he looked like he was doing sparring almost like like a sparring drill where 
the whole point, you do the drill where you just try not to get hit. You don't throw no punches. You know what I'm saying? When you do those kind of drills. So this guy's whole job is to hit you. You can't hit him back, but you just got to be able to move, time up, move, time up. That's what he looked like he was doing. But go ahead. Only reason only reason why I gave Lomo the second round was because I was going for uh, Lopez. So to, to take the biasness out of it, I gave him the second round because I think I really had it with – I think I had it 9-3, maybe 8-4. I had an A4, I think. I had an A4. A4. And give him, just take the bias out of it, because I was going for Lopez, 7-5. You gave it to Lopez, 7-5? Yeah, if, if I was taking the, if I was taking the, if I was just saying, like, man, I'm biased because I like Lopez, you feel me? i mm. say 7-5. But I really had, like, A4. I had an A4. I'm going to be honest with you, man. I had that fight. I, I, I start... It got to a point I started getting nervous about my bet around the close to the 10 to 11 round. I was like, bro, you losing now. You losing all these You looking confused now that he's speeding up on you. And it's like Loma picked up the pace and just started doing a lot of herky-jerky movement and just punches and bunches and just sped, he just sped up the offense. And it was like T.O. didn't know what to do almost at some point. I didn't know if he was tired, if he was confused. So when that 11th round came, I text my man and I was like, yo, this fight might be closer than I thought. Tio might be throwing it away right now. And then when he won that 12th round the way he did, and I watched, I said, oh, no, nah, he kept it. He won this fight because he won that 12th round that oh, way. Yeah. When he won that 12th it's, round, I was like, he sealed the deal. Definitely did that. That's why I say I had an eight fold. If I take the, if I say I'll take the unbiasedness out of it, it would be a seven five. Mm -hmm. See, and I didn't have no bias, man, because – I want it. I, I, you know, no, I just want to see a good fight. But those odds were so like, good. Well, you already, you was already going for Lopez anyway. And, uh, you know how people. Think. I'm gonna be honest. I thought Loma would win. I thought Loma would win, but I was like, this kid I is did. special, and I was like, these odds are so good. I was like, I gotta put a dub on it, man. I gotta put a dub on this. But I hate I split my bet. I should have put the whole twenty on the win. Um, instead, I put 10 on a knockout and I put 10 on a win for Lopez because I would get more money that way. So I tried to split the bet, being greedy. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, um, shoot, I made, I paid. So basically, off that 10 I put on it, though, I think I won like $42 off $10. So I won't, mad. Hell no. So when, really, when I put the dub down, when you do that math, I just doubled my money. But if he would have knocked him out and won, I would have won like $72 off of 20 or eight or seventy eight dollars, something like that. I was like, damn, twenty, give me damn near eighty dollars for Lopez. Yeah, man, I'm gonna give him a chance. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't give Kell Brook no chance with them odds, bro. Cause I already knew what Crawford was gonna do. He was gonna get him out of there. Crawford, one of them dudes, if you don't supposed to be in there with him, he. I was mad because I I I I had bet it. I bet it Crawford seven, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh round knockout. And I had went, and I had just put some money on Kell Brook, uh decision if he if he, if he went to the car decision. And I knew they had tried to rob motherfucking uh, Crawford if he tried to come down to the cars, if he made it that long. <laughs> hey, uh, we don't even consider Terrence Crawford a knockout artist. Why not? We don't. People don't even say that. They call him skilled and a pugilist. <laughs> He's a knockout artist at this point too, bro. He's on a streak. 10 out of 11, mm -hmm. 10 out of the last 11 people, eight in a row. Say what you want yeah. to say. That's going through weight classes. Just not, that's dope. He only had five white fights at welterweight. So he on a, you know, 10 out of the last 11, bro. That's going through weight classes. And I hear people say he too little at 147. I'm like, bro, that, that's going. That's what makes him different from these guys. They got to suck down to get to 147. He be, He's building up. He's, he's getting to eat more now. You know what I'm saying? I can eat seconds now <laughs> instead of just – or he ain't got to eat certain things. Like, he's training year-round like that too. That metabolism yeah. high, bro, that's crazy, bro. Th that dude's a knockout artist with either hand. Yeah. I say, yeah, he is. I just I, – I really want him to prove, prove – I just I want him to have that big fight at 147. Me too, bro. 
And I don't like him that's saying true. stuff like I don't need it or I'm in a Hall of Fame already. And okay, see, that's, yes, nigga, we that's know that, but don't say it. <laughs> don't say that because it's going to come across like you don't want to fight. I want him to be out there at the every fight saying like he doing now. Every time you see me talk, I'm going to say, you know, he ain't got to be antagonistic, but he can say, I want Spence. I will pack y'all. Spence will pack y'all. But I think people get in the point now. That's what he keeps saying. That's all he want. Spence will pack y'all. Now we need to make sure Spence is saying the same thing instead of just talking about the numbers of how much you want to get paid. Like, say, do you want Crawford and Pacquiao or do you? Because we don't want to see you fight. Them he didn't already say that, bro. He didn't already say Spence already like said that. I hear Spence say he going to take the easy way. No. Literally, he said, no, I'm going to take no, the easy no, route. No, I ain't got to fight no. you now. I can take the easy route. No, 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 no. That didn't no. happen? He never said that? No, it ain't, it ain't the easy route. It, no, no the, 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 the easy words, route though. is this. Hey, no, that when he said, hey, he said uh, the easy uh, basement. When he said the easy route, the easy basement. route was. Basement, he trying to talk to you. Hold on, hold on. Go ahead, Black Star. Hey, bro, you, you got your calling number? You call yeah, in because I think we had to have the chat call in. That's cool. Yeah. Hold on one second. Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, text you. I'm gonna text you the the, the call in number uh, trick, and then you can text it to him, and then he can call in on that number, and then we we'll have him on there like that. Okay. Tell the call Tell the call number you got. I'm gonna jump out and jump on my other on, on the phone. And what would we say? Right. Okay. It's your boy, Basement Boss and Talk, coming to you live from Clutch Radio. We're about to have a special guest in the building. My friend Solomon, we're going to come right back. It's your boy, Basement Box and Talk. Yeah, we're gonna have the uh, champ uh, call in here in a second, there, fellas. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, champ about to call in. Hey, hey Black Star, I'm gonna just listen. I'm gonna, um, I'm about to hop out of here, man. I'm gonna go catch up with my grandmother for her birthday dinner. Cause I'm already late, but I'm gonna be listening and I'll be in the comments. All right. That's cool, bro. That's cool. <clears throat> Thank you again for having me on. It means a lot to me, bro. I'll see you soon. Yeah, anytime, right. good brother. Anytime. Appreciate you, man. Yes, sir. Salute. Yeah, That's have a great time. interview, man. Brother Mark Nash, man. Salute to my good brother Mark Nash. Thank you. <laughs> All right, I'm about to bring you on there. All right. All right. Hey, can everybody hear the champ, man? The champ, Freddie Pelton, is in the building. 
Yes, indeed, man. Man, we uh, sure appreciate you coming through, man, and chopping it up with us today, champ. Man, I know we had some interesting time, anytime. Yeah, bro. I tell you, man. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that day going stream yard, man, but uh we had to find a way to get you going. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it, it might be partially my fault because I'm not really good with this stuff. So, <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, my son, he, he'll do it no time. You know, he, he, he can do that stuff ever since he was young. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah I know how that goes, man. They, it's it's something... nowadays, boy, they know how to do stuff. It's oh, real. You know, I had my son when he was what thirteen years old. Joe was like, took my phone and set it up for me. I was like, what the? <laughs> I couldn't figure it out. He did it. Yeah, man. I was like, wow. Young folks know about that stuff, man. That's for sure, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bro. I was telling the, the fam all about you, man, and 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 letting mm -hmm. them know, man, the great career that you have and all the great stuff that you've done and all the great fights that you had, man. How you you fought everybody. You wouldn't duck no smoke. Yeah, I, I, I like. See me. I love boxing. I love the the whole thing. You know, the crowd screaming when you're breaking somebody down. That part, man, is unforgettable. I mean, and you, I mean, long after you quit, you still yearn for that, you know. So, <laughs> I mean, that's what you enjoy the most when you when you start pick, picking a guy apart. You hear the people they letting you know, you know, wow, look at this guy, he's going to work. I mean, you really enjoy that, and you kind of miss it. You know what I'm saying? So, exactly. You know, yeah. for me, it was. You know, it was really, it was really cool. I appreciate it. You know, I let the fans know that I appreciated what they did and, you know, being there for me or, you know, on the other side, I still appreciated the fact that they were there, you know, to watch us fight. But, um, unfortunately, that chance I didn't get to win, you yeah? know? Yeah, but you know, hey man, you know what, bro? Let me add a little something to that, man, because I ain't get the introduction one hundred percent right. So I gotta say it now, man. Hey, you hold know, on one second. I, the introduction yeah. on the radio champion, Freddie, the fearless one. Pendleton is in the building. You. <laughs> you forgot that, right? <laughs> yes, Steve, bro. You know what, man? I'd be after the WBU. World yeah, championship. Yes, yes, indeed, man. Yes. Yeah, I'm a world champion too. So. But um. You know, a lot, a lot of you know, a lot of people don't know that because they they, they don't want to uh, like boxing. They want to put out there that I was a two time world champion, so they kept trying to count. You know, be everybody would announce me the I bet world champion and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, you know, I was like, but I won that other belt, world title was a brand new world title, <laughs> and they got pissed off because I won it. Everybody that they picked to win the championship that they wanted, only one of the guys that they that they wanted to win actually won one of their belts. The other six guys who won championships were the guys that weren't supposed to win, that were picked to lose, but we ended up winning. So they were um they started saying, you know, the boxing people in boxing and all these guys talking about they didn't wanna they didn't want to get behind the belt because the people that they picked it, they chose to, to win those belts didn't win. Exactly. exactly. So then, as soon as they didn't get what they wanted, they uh, said they're not going to back the belt anymore. Wow. Yeah, so they, and they, yeah, they dropped the whole belt. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They were, the guy was like, well, damn, man, you know, you ain't world champion. I said, I'm world champion. Shoot, I'm still world champion, but I, you know, they just, just they discontinued the belt because they didn't uh -huh. get what they wanted. They wanted, you know, these clowns out there that really don't deserve to be champions to win. And, you know, they only got one of them. Out of the six belts that, that fought, the six people that fought for the championship belt, only only one of the guys that they chose to win a belt actually won. You know, they had this guy from... Who was from? He's from Chile, I think it was. Who was uh, fighting for the, for the title? I fought him in, um, in uh, I think it was uh, Dominican Republic. And I, I, I beat the crap out of him and won the belt. <laughs> you know, so. Man. You know, maybe I wasn't supposed to win. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, you know you bring so. up a great point, man. How uh, 
these people will do that, man. They let a whole title go because they don't, like you say, they didn't have the guy winning that they wanted to win. And now they invent titles like a franchise title and giving, you know, creating one for people that they want to have one, even though he's scared to do yeah, I, I watched the, the guy that they said would beat me. Uh, what's his name? Um, oh, what's uh, the guy's name? Uh, 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 that wasn't like, really like, realist, man. That yeah, you know what the world way now? Oh, they said the guy. Oh, the guy you were talking about earlier. They said they could they could beat you. Uh, uh but Bill Crawford. Yeah. Yeah. Crawford. Yeah. yeah. Now, now Crawford. He's not. I look at Crawford and I see a top amateur fighter, or uh, like a guy who who's in the national and stuff like that. That's the kind. Of, that's the kind of skills he had. Uh, like a, a national champion in the amateur. He has. He does not have skills to be labeled a world champion. There's no way in hell he would have won a world title in in the days that I came up in. Man. He wouldn't. Have, he wouldn't. Have, he would have got wiped out. <laughs> you know. But and I was like, I was fighting national champions since I started boxing. My first fight was with uh, um, what's his name? Um, Raymond Evans, who uh, who was fighting in the nationals. He went to the nationals. Three times in his amateur career, yeah. and I beat the crap out of him, and they and they gave it to him. But in the rematch, I stopped him. Oh. You know, then I was the second. My second fight was a guy that just missed making the national championship. You know, but he was in. He he fought, but he didn't win. So, and he was in there with Happy English, and I stopped him in the second round. So I'm like, you know, we, we, I'm fighting real fighters, fighting real fighters. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? My first amateur fight was with him, was champion, and that was my first fight. That was my first fight. That was my first fight for the Golden Glove champion. The Golden Glove champion. And beat the crap out of him and lost. Man. Yeah. Yeah, it's. He had some 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 knockdown drag outs, man. Some real. I'm so that's what I'm saying. What we yeah. got here, what, what, what most fight fans don't understand, don't really uh, get to appreciate, is the type of fighter that this brother was, man. He fought everybody, and he he was no ducking in any style, and with no hesitation, he'll fight you on five days notice, man. Who who was that you fought and, on five days notice? You, you know, I fought um, I fought uh uh, what was his name? Um, the guy from Detroit. He was champion. He was the world champion in Detroit. Tracy Spann. No, lightweight. Oh, hold on. It was before. It was before I fought Spann. Uh, Jimmy Paul. You, I you, fought Jimmy Paul on five days' notice. Man, five days. For the title. Man, <laughs> for, for the title. Five days' notice. Yeah, you. And, it was reason. <laughs> if I wasn't, if it wasn't for the ninth round, where I was just dead tired, my leg, I couldn't even feel my legs, man. He yeah. caught me with a shot, and I, I wasn't hurt. I just went down because I was just tired. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I went down, I got up, and they said, "You are, right? yeah, my, you know what I'm saying." And you know, I'm like, he, 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 he I gave him the toughest fight in his career, and I wasn't in no shape. Man, in five days, no, you had no type of. Yeah, five days, you know what I'm saying? They called me up. No, I think it was seven days. I'm sorry. Because they called me on Monday and I fought the next Tuesday. Man. They called my train on Monday when we fought the next Tuesday. But this idiot called me on, on, he don't call me the day they, um, the day they called him. He called me the next day. So I'm like, motherfucker, seven days. And you call me, and you call me, tell me, you want me to, um, go fight? And he said, yeah, and, and, cause I, you know, I was, I was in, I had, I had to drop out. I'm in the 12th grade, and I had to drop out because I had to go help my mom because my dad walked out. You know, left my mom with all these kids, so I had to go to work. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm pissed off because I had to, I had to step out and go to work. You know what I'm saying? You know, that, that blew my mind. I was, I was really pissed about that. Yeah, man. Hey, you is working like that, and and, and you know you you out here fighting for world titles and stuff, man, and having to work. And you got guys out here now that ain't got no other occupation, and yet somebody offered them sixty forty. They don't want to fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it took me, 
I, I take him fights like Tyrone Trice, right? Yeah. You know how many days I have for that one? Uh uh-uh. uh. A week. First Tyrone Trice, you, you know what week? I was doing? Yeah, fighting Tyrone Trice. They gave me I I had a week's notice. Wow. And you know where I was? Where was that? Playing basketball. <laughs> I was playing basketball on the courts. I wasn't even training, I wasn't in the gym. And they called me and said, you know, we got a fight for you. And I was like, shit, man, fuck out of here. I'm going to work. I got to go to work later. I got to, I got no fight. He said, yeah, we got a fight. I said, man, fuck out of here. You can call me for no bullshit like that. Five days notice. And he said, oh, well, at least you had this five times now. I said, I'll be right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I went to fall out there. Shit. I said, what? Is it 5,000? Yeah, I'll try to take the fight. Yeah. And everybody said, uh, oh, he going to kill you? I had never seen Tyrone try to fight. Yeah. And yeah, I, I watched him fight when I put my, I watched a couple of his fights. He was crushing people. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah. I said, damn, he's undefeated. And he was, uh, I think it was at the time, he was 11 and 0, 11 and 0 or 12 and 0, one of them. And uh, I went down there and they bought, they, I didn't, they, when they picked me up in the limo at the, uh, at the, at the, airport and all the way to the to the hotel he's telling me how I'm gonna get knocked out because Tyron's rice is too good and ain't no way in the world you gonna beat him and that no I, I started laughing I said really he said yeah I said okay well I tell you what when I knock this motherfucker out you tell me about it <laughs> and I went and I went out and I got in the hotel and he, he just looked at me and uh Abel was like Everybody was looking at me like, oh, you know, dead man walking, you know what I'm saying? I was like, shit, I'm, like, I'm, I'm walking to my execution, you know what I'm saying? And when I got in the ring and everybody, everybody announced my name, you know, you barely heard anybody clap or cheer. Wow. But when they announced his name, you know, you told me he won the Super Bowl or some shit like that. Yeah, you just went crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And they were standing up, clapping, and I look at that combo. That made me mad. I said, I'm going to crack this motherfucking shit open. So I got out there, and, um, you know, he was, you know, he, he got this confident look like he just walking in and destroyed me. But he, he, I saw him after the first round, I saw him, he got frustrated because he couldn't, he couldn't really hit me. And he couldn't catch me with his jab, and he was long. He took a 6-1. And I'm like five, I'm five, yeah, I'm like five, 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 I'm five. And he couldn't five. catch me with a jab. He was getting ticked off. And then I started taking him apart. You know, you know, by by the fourth round, he was totally frustrated. And I know I had him. In, I had when I won him. Then, then he walked into a shot. In the first shot, when I put him down, you know, the referee tried to help him. You know, taking all the time, caution, telling me to get back in the corner. And I'm like, nigga, I'm in the corner. I can't get no further back in the corner now. <laughs> so when the referee, the referee said, "Fight." He saw that he was still hurt, so he tried to get in the way, and I pushed him aside and hit him with a right hand, and down he went. Wow. And that was the end of it. See that? He stopped it. See that, man? And here you was, a fighter out there. That's a hungry fighter that's really out there trying to get it, man. He realized that, hey, mm-hmm. I'm out here. I'm doing what I do. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take full advantage of every opportunity that's presented to me, regardless of whatever the circumstances is, man. He went out there, dared to be great, and went out there and bet on himself and won. <laughs> You know, these, these young fighters got to See, but the thing is, yeah. what these people didn't realize was I, I love to fight. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I was a guy, came up on the streets, worked in the streets, you know what I'm saying? Run the streets all day long, fought all the time. I've been fighting since I was in elementary school. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 I, didn't want, I was one of them guys that I didn't want to fight, but if you made, if you wanted to make me, you made me fight. I'm gonna fight, you know. And I and I knocked out a bunch of people. You know, I'm fighting in the street for nothing. Shit, and they said I can get paid. I said, hell yeah, <laughs> I yeah. did that. You know, and uh, I really didn't think about being a world champion, nothing like that. And then until like I got you know further into the sport, but uh. You know, I ain't know. I said, shit, I can knock people the fuck out and get paid for it, too. That's perfect for me. <laughs> All the fighting I was doing, you know, and not getting paid. Exactly. You know, I walk out one with the, um, the one, the one, the first day in high school, I had to punch this dude in the face. 
he walk up to me because I look like I was in high school and I look like a sixth grader. <laughs> you know, and the guy walk up to me and start talking crap. I punched him in his face. When I put him on his ass, I kicked him, and they had to grab me and get me off this joker. And then everybody from then on, they was like, "Oh, this nigga." Oh, you know. <laughs> yeah, but I got, I had, I had to, you know, anybody who's trying to try me, all the guys think it was the bad boys and all this kind of crap. But I earned my respect. Okay. But right. uh, I just, I love school though. That's the only thing I regret was coming out, you know, in the 12th when I, you know, but I had to do what I had to do. So I had to take care of my mom and it was, I was the only one went home. My brother was gone. My oldest brother was in the Air Force. So it was up to me. Man, see there, you was doing what you had to do. Man, hey, we got a question yep. from one of the guys in the chat, man. Uh, Shy Towns Finest says he, uh, does the champ think Teron Millett was overrated? Teron Millett? Yes. <laughs> yeah, he almost made me say so, right? <laughs> <laughs> overrated, he had no business being where he was at. He had no business being named or called the world champion. He wasn't even close to being a world champion. I beat the crap out of him. He then then they gave him my championship. I was a USBA champion. I beat him up. I knocked him down. He called it a slip. You know, he, I mean, he took a face and all swore up after the fight. And they and they hand him the decision and give him my USBA title. He didn't deserve it. But you know, some fighters that's what they do in boxing. You know, nowadays fighters that don't belong. Anywhere near world championship, get shots at the world championship and get the opportunity to become a champion even though they don't deserve it. Exactly. So, Man. yeah, that, was, that, that really hurt me when they gave him my USB title. But I made up for that by winning my second world championship in, um, when I went to, uh, uh, oh, yeah, what was that? I think it was, it was, it was, Columbia, I think it was. Yeah, I think it was Columbia. Wow. No, when it was Jamaica. I beat this guy in Jamaica. They brought him from, uh, they flew him in from Panama. He was supposed to knock me out. He was undefeated. I destroyed his ass, put him down three times. They had to stop it. And then I thought the referee was going to stop the fight. And the ref said, no, no, he can go. He said, shit. <laughs> yeah, I told my. I told him, yeah, I ain't going, I'm, I'm going back to the corner, I'm going where I'm going. And uh, then the brother, he has to call the fight because he said, he, he said, no, my, I said, screw that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he should have called the fight. Yeah, I don't think he should have called the fight. Yeah, I don't think he should have called the fight. Yeah, and he got a good, nice trip out of the deal, too. Got to go to Jamaica to do it, too. Man. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, I love Jamaica, man. Shit, met a girl. I wanted to marry her, but she, um, she was scared to leave Jamaica. And I wasn't going to stay in Jamaica because, you know, Jamaica, the brothers in Jamaica are too aggressive. You know, and it's either you're going to kill one of them or you're going to, you know what I'm saying? You, especially when you're not Jamaican. Yeah. So, you know, I, 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 had, I got in a couple of fights, you know, arguments and fights down there, just being, just down there training. And fortunately for me, I had a bunch of kids down there that I was working with that, that had my back. And you walk up on me, and they make sure they make sure you won't do that again, you know. Because <laughs> I had a bunch of uh, these young kids. I was down there for about a month, and I started training these young kids. I saw these kids in the gym; they work out, and there wasn't no training. I worked on them. I was like, "Well, who, who's training them?" They said, "Um, oh, nobody's working on them. They, they just work, you know they learn a little bit. We teach them a little bit, then they go on us. How the hell can you teach them a little bit and then go on on their own? They gotta have a trainer." So I started helping them. And I started showing them how to move around, I would spar with them and teach them how to fight. And they was, you know, they was, that was it. They was, they'd do anything for me after that. So oh, yeah. Like, I mean, they would take me all over the place, go play with me girls, hang out, chill. You know, but I was, on, I was, at the time, I was training for a fight, so it wasn't nothing I could do about it. <laughs> the girl part of it, so. <laughs> You know, but, uh, hold, we, yeah. you know, and then as, as it was over, I stayed for a week, and um, I met this this girl, beautiful girl, blonde. She was real, um, long, dark hair, pretty tall, but she 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 like a white girl, 
and they they call what they call her Malala or some shit like that. And uh, she was um, you know, we we was cool. I you know, I, I was like, shit, I wanted to bring that girl. <laughs> I wanted to bring that girl here, marry her, and have some kids. But she was like, she was scared. she didn't want to leave Jamaica, so I couldn't. I so I want I, I'm not gonna be able to stay. And then we kind of just fell out after that, you know, because. Yeah. I don't want to keep running back and forth and uh, she wasn't going to, you know. Yeah. Because I wasn't going to live in Jamaica. That, was, that wasn't going to happen. Because I was, <laughs> I was one of them crazy nuts. And when you are a nut and you got a bunch of nuts, <laughs> that doesn't make for, you know. You know. Plus, I was an outsider. So, it wasn't going to yeah. work out for me. So, I left. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got a uh, bunch of questions, man, from these guys in the chat, man. They, they want to get at you, champ. <laughs> uh, Mike, that, two, that, that's up, bro. Mike two hundred two says, uh, wh- uh, "What type of person was Don King?" Oh, please! <laughs> Everything you think about Don is, is what Don is. He's a jerk off. He's an asshole. He can be all of them. You know what I'm saying? One thing he is: he's a good promoter. He can make money for you, or he can, or, or not. It's just according to what he wants to do. But Don was for Don, and that was it. I mean, you see a bunch of things about Don that ain't that aren't so good, but you know what I'm saying. Me, as far as the only thing I really, really know about Don is, is that you know he's a good promoter. If he wants you to win, if he wants you to get a championship, if he wants to get you to a title, he can do it, and he can do it better than anybody else. You know what I'm saying? He was the top standard for you know making a champion. He could put you in that position to get the title fight. Now, if he wanted you to win it or not, that's questionable. <laughs> you know, he played the game too. You know, if he wanted you to win, you won. If he didn't want you to win, you didn't win. Oh yeah, so, man. He used to have it in there where if he gets you the title fight, he got to uh, promote your next two fights behind that just just so you can get the shot, whether mm-hmm. you win or lose. So. Oh, on a contract with, you know, for him to get, to be, to even be in line to fight for a title. You had to sign a promotional deal with him and you had to give him options. You know, on, the, on your fight. You know, not option. What do they call that? Um, like he has the right to, to, uh, promote you for, uh, what? Three fights after, three championship fights after you re- negotiate. I think they, they, uh, I think they call it options or something. I'm not sure, but um, that's what he, he he would have to sign some deal like that. That he gets the whole he gets you for you know if you win a world title, he gets you the three times defensive. And then after that, you know you gotta um you know determine whether you want to resign with him or not. And after he starts for more money, Man. you know so. Yeah, and I mean, I was, when I signed with him, I did it with him. I gave him the deal that if I win a world title, he, he has to pay me. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He he got to start pay. Start my first paycheck will be nothing less than hundred thousand if I won a world title. So, but I was with him. He you know he he got me he got me close. But he always would really have people that he was rooting. Like, he brought me in to fight this guy from Italy. And, uh, you know, I put this guy from Italy. I dropped this guy twice, and he called the Swiss, both of them. I'm the only guy in the, in the history of boxing that half the guys I've knocked down, they slip. Yeah, and then they live with me. They say I'm not a puncher. <laughs> That's what kills me. Yeah, I can't understand how they I'm say that, I'm not a puncher, man. Right I'm knocking something. anybody down. Yeah, that right hand was something else, bro. I don't know how nobody could ever say you wasn't a puncher because I've I seen many of guys <laughs> do some funny things when that right hand land. <laughs> you kill me. They said that um, Devil Red was a better puncher than I was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, yeah, because you fed him a bunch of ducks. That's why his knockout ratio was so good. But yeah. anybody else, when he fought guys that, that had skills, he didn't knock anybody out. 
Hey, hey, you know what? I'm, 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 I'm not down and out some of the best fighters in the world. I'm glad you said that, champ, because you know, that's one thing I used to always say about that guy, man. You know, and you know, everybody know I'm a big uh, De La Hoya fan. I made a very lucrative offer. You know how he talk, <laughs> I, man. I, I'll be honest, bro. I ain't never like it. I, I ain't never like that kid. Everybody was shocked when he when he came out when he when he came out that he was gay, except me. <laughs> the two fighters, the two gay fighters of my kind. Everybody said it was. Everybody was shocked when they found out they were gay. Except me, man. I, I was the first one that said Mike Tyson was a punk, and nobody gave up. I was like, you know, Mike Tyson, you know, Mike Tyson, you shot me. Oh, you, 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 you hurt that guy? You can't do that kind of shit. I said, what that got to do with being gay? Because you can punch. Whoa! Wait a minute, like, Wait a minute champ. Like, Hold on, champ. I, did, did I hear you correctly? You said Mike Tyson. Yeah. Did he say that correct? So, oh. Oh, 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 say it one no, more no, time. Man, it ain't no secret. <laughs> what? <laughs> it ain't no secret. What? <laughs> it ain't no secret. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> hey, champ. <laughs> you don't clutch radio, man. I'm Mike. That he was. I, I mean, anybody say he did that, and I felt he was gay. You know, what? I ain't gonna say I ain't gonna say I know it for sure, but that's what I felt. And rumors went around about that. It was all up in, you know it was it was all up in different places, you know, all over Miami, everybody used to say it. I don't know, everybody saying that he was that's what he was. And I mean, I know a lot of my friends said that's what he was and Man. Yeah. Hey, champ, are we speaking on De La Hoya? He got, got a little bit on the, um, uh, you I, know. I don't know, champ. Can you can you hear the, uh, the panel? You got one of the brothers want to ask you a question. Yeah, I'm going hey, to champ. hey, champ, you hear me? Can you yeah. Hear me? Okay. Yeah. Are we are we speaking on De La Hoya when you just said that's what we talking about, De La Hoya right now? Yeah. You said he was a little funny. That's what he was? Is that what you're saying? That's what everybody was saying. Everybody was telling me that he was um that he was gay. Oh my God. Oh. Oh yeah. No. I, mean, I, thought, I didn't you know, I, I was like, you know, when we when we was, we was up in um in Vegas, one of my friends was telling me that too, because and then when it came out and everybody said it came out that he was gay. Like, I mean, what difference does that make? He's still a fighter. <laughs> it don't make him no less a fighter or no less a champion because he's a gay guy, you know what I'm saying? But um Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to fight him. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to I wanted to fight him. Okay, yeah. You know, rumors have been around about both him and Mike Tyson. You know what I'm saying? Uh, especially in Miami. You know what I'm saying? All over Miami everybody was saying things. Even, I mean, you know what I'm saying? So even about Mike I mean Tyson? they was coming out saying this, that and the other. And I heard about De La Hoya when I was in the amateurs. I mean, when I was, um, he was in the amateurs. That's when I heard about, the first heard about him. You know, everybody started yeah. putting out rumors. You know how it go. Oh, yeah. Rumors yeah. come out. Yeah. And because I heard it first when I was, I was in Washington after my boys came out of the, um, out of the Olympic trial. And he had won. And my boys are coming out telling me some things that, that happened up there that they were talking about saying that. And they were saying that they felt that he was, you know, that's how he was. But I didn't think, I, don't, I didn't think he was until, they, you know, he actually, they actually came out with um that picture of him and, and women's um, In a fishnet. lingerie. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. He had to come out, man. He couldn't keep it contained for so long. He had to release the crack. And all. Yeah, I mean, you got, you walk around with the, some of the, some fine women. I mean, some, yeah, this guy could have had any woman he wanted. He could have had any actress he wanted. Because he was so big. But that's what, what, what got me, was that this brother could have been walking around with some of the finest women around. Because I was. And he wasn't. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this girl I had, her name was Crystal, and uh, I was dating her in, in California. I just fly back and forth from Miami to California to see her. This girl was gorgeous. I mean, she was gorgeous. 
And I was I was going out with her, and I'm like, here's Devil Warrior. You know what I'm saying? I see this man, he making he making big money. You know what I'm saying? He made more money than I ever heard than I ever had just by making a signing bonus. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And he ain't working around with movie stars and all that, walking with down and with his, with his arm around movie stars. I said, What's wrong with this picture? Yeah, there you go. That's a good But point. you never saw him with a man or a woman. You know what I'm saying? You didn't even nobody yeah. knew what he was till till that um that picture came out. <laughs> with him with you know with lingerie on <laughs> yeah man hey champ uh, uh tell everybody about how it was that time when uh you was trying to fight him and, and how they how they they played you. oh man that's how i walked up to him and i told that joker from sure they introduced we was in california at the forum i walked up on him and i told him i said hey you know i said oh yeah, you you champ the world and all that stuff. Hey, I said you you you, try, you gonna fight for the title? You gonna fight for the title? Okay, because anybody was talking about the champion coming when I came in, then he gonna walk in. And I I I greeted him. I walked up to him. I let him know. I said, bro, let me tell you something. Only way you gonna take this belt from me is if you kill me. You know what I'm saying? So it took me so you know how long it took me to get this belt. And I said and. I remind him of that fight where it was the, the middleweight champion ends up uh, beating this guy to death because because the guy called him a fag. And I'm like, you know, that's what that's the only way you gonna win, you gonna get get that belt from me. If you kill me, or I kill you, because I'm planning on killing you. I ain't planning on winning the decision. I'm planning on killing you. So, oh. you know, I can't wait to fight you. And that right there, they said from what I heard. He went straight to Bob Arum and said, "Yeah, I ain't fight them." And that's when they started. When they made me fight up in California, it's like fight Rafael Rellis, and they set me up up there. I knocked Rellis down for that jump down four times, and they refused to stop the fight. I kept knocking him down, knocking him down. They kept giving him a chance, giving him a chance, giving him a chance. You know, yeah, that was with me delaying the count and all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, I'm fine. I did. I got set up. You know, and I should have sued them bastards. <laughs> I, I should have, but I didn't. So Man. I just moved on with my career and kept on, kept on banging. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one another. One a one a second world title over, over in. Uh, you know, I think it was um. Uh, is Dominican Republic? I think it was when I won that title. Man, yeah, was... it was a scheduled twelve round fight with a top from, opponent from um he was from Colombia and I and I stopped. Man. No, yeah, he was from Colombia and I stopped him. Wow. Stopped See that him, though, but, but, that, that shows you how they couldn't uh, believe I won that belt. Yeah. And it's and how they, they <laughs> tried to keep you from that Delahoya fight and how they, they can control who who gets what opportunity and keep people, certain ones, from getting opportunities. I mean, that there you go, right there. You got living proof of oh, that's, it happening. Yeah, that's the deal. That's a, right now. The reason why boxing is falling apart, boxing ain't gonna last too much longer. They don't. They don't stop doing what they're doing. Because what they're doing is they're promoting fighters that don't have no talent. You know what I'm saying? Whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? And and I mean, some of these fighters are good, and that's it. But People want to see, you know, fighters out there that really have skills. And I don't see that anymore. It's like, you just got guys swinging at each other. And that's not boxing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The whole boxing is the art of it. You know, how a guy gets out, slips out of the way of punches. How a guy doesn't get, you know, when you go to hit him, he gets out the way and catches you. You know what I'm saying? The technique, how a guy moves around the ring, and how he, you know, sets a guy up to get hit with a certain punch. All that's dying. It's just about guys going in the ring swinging on each other. And that's all I see from, you know, I'm like, damn, this, where's the skill and what they're doing? They're just throwing punches. I mean. Rock'em, sock'em, robots. So, so yeah, let me ask you something. All the, huh? all how, the how, do you, how do you feel about. Rules and, 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 and everything that's, that you set up a guy, put a guy in position to get hit. All that's not even talked about anymore. I don't even hear trainers in the gym talking like that anymore. 
Wow. You know, and, you know, it's ridiculous. I and mean, I'm like, a, one of the guys say, oh, Floyd Mayweather Sr. is one of the best fighters in the game, one of the best trainers in the game. And I'm like, yeah, he's good. But you got about three guys left in boxing, four left in boxing that have that kind of knowledge. The rest of them are done. Hmm. You know, either they who, passed away or they retired. Who, who would you think those, you four, those four guys would be that you that you would say at this time? That are in the game? Yes, yeah, sir. That are left in the game? You got uh, um, Jimmy Paul. He's a really good trainer. And you have, um, uh, what's the clown over here? What's the, the other guy that, that they built up that they say is really good is not. Uh, what's his name? Um, he trained with, uh, he worked with Floyd Mayweather at one point. He used to be a fighter. With, with for, uh, uh, which one? With Floyd Mayweather? He worked, with Floyd. he worked with everybody. He worked with Floyd. He worked with a couple other fighters. He's, he's in Vegas. In Vegas. He's a trainer? I can't remember his name. He used to be a boxer. But when he was a boxer, he was a punching bag. That's what he used to be. If you call, I don't really call him a boxer. He was a punching bag. Because anybody he fought beat, beat the crap out of him. <laughs> oh, uh, and couple, he's one of the best trainers in the world. Give me a break. Oh, Who's he man. talking about, Blackstar? Uh, I can't from, remember this guy's name. And he, um, but he, I know you're he, talking about Buddy McGirt. He's worked with all the top fighters. Huh? I know you're talking about Buddy McGirt, are you? No, Buddy McGirt is no. a good trainer. <laughs> Buddy McGirt is a good trainer. I can't, I can't, you know, I wish I would have fought somebody like him. I wanted to fight him. He was one of the best, and I wanted to fight the best. But we never got a chance to fight because they turned it down. We, they called me to fight. Buddy McGriff on a five day notice. I was like, you out to damn mind. <laughs> <laughs> now I fight, I fight people and I've done that before. Yeah. But not with nobody McGurk. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah it's good. Yeah. Ain't no way in the world I'm go in there with Buddy McGurk with five days. No way in the world. Yeah. No way. Hey Chap, I got a question. What do you think about all these what do you think about all these different belts and weight classes? But they got him. He's labeled as trainers in boxing. He, he said it was Freddie Roach he was talking and, about, bro. Oh, yeah, okay. Where, where's the proof? Where's the um, where's the people that he made champion? You know what I'm saying? All he's done was took somebody else's product and put it under his name. Yeah, yeah. I agree. And they gave him credit for being the best train, one of the best trainers in the world because he's training other people's fighters. He, when somebody, some manager signs up another fighter and puts puts. Freddie Roach in his corner, all them Freddie Roach toward him every day. It's bullshit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that's how they did. That's how they made names for a lot of these trainers that weren't shit. Uh, what Ollie, what's the guy that used to train Ali? Um, 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 Dundee? Yeah. Uh, Angelo? Angelo Dundee, yeah. Angelo Dundee. Yeah. I, I can't say he wasn't a, a, a he, was, he wasn't shit. Angelo was okay. He was yeah. he was okay training. He was the alright training. Yeah. But he wasn't. He didn't make Ali what he was. Yeah, he didn't he even make Sugar Ray. He didn't even make Sugar Ray. That was Jenks Morton's. Hmm? He didn't even make Sugar Ray. That was Jenks Morton's. Uh, right. He, he took fighters that the, that what they do. They wanted to make money. They said, "Who you go to, Angelo?" Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know high profile. Saying? And they put him in the corner. Let him be the face. When anybody else did the work, he was the face of, 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 the, of the corner. Yeah. And that means if Angelo had you, you was going to win. Bullshit. <laughs> you know, he was in my corner one time. You know that, right? He worked one of my fights. Oh, yeah? And, and, I don't remember that. And uh, they, he was in the corner. He going to tell me, um, I was fighting this guy in, uh, <clears throat> in Tampa. So my trainer's there, and then he had his trainer. He, he was the second man, but we didn't have a second, so he worked the second. And he's telling me what to do, and I'm ignoring him. And so he's, he's saying, you know, I'm sure I keep telling you to box this guy. You keep fighting him. And I'm like, I looked at him, and I just turned around. And my trainer was telling me, my trainer started start listening to him, talking about he wanted me to fight, the, the start 
boxing more and this, that, and other. And I looked at my, I looked at my trainer. I said, man, look, I got this, man. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> so he got pissed. And, and because I went out there with a guy, who, this kid that was that I was fighting was pretty tough. And uh, I think it was Shelton, was it Shelton LeBlanc? I think it was Shelton LeBlanc. I think it was Shelton Leo. Shelton LeBlanc, I think was his name. And he was a tough kid. And I know just boxing, I wasn't going to get the decision trying to trying to just box and stay out, out of the range. That wasn't going to give me the decision. This kid was coming at me with everything. So I started standing with him, and I had to let him know, bro, you're going gonna, you gonna to walk into something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you keep walking up, walking towards me like, you you know, like, there's nothing to worry about. Uh-huh. And sure enough, in the third round, I damn near knocked him clean out. <laughs> and, uh, you know, where we gave him an eight count. And, you know, it was a tough fight all week, too, but then I just started nailing him with combinations, combination on top of combination. So he couldn't overcome that, and I beat him by the city. But I told him, you know, he, you know, if he work on, if he put, if he went to work and did what he needed to do, he'd be champ of the world. But I don't know, he didn't, he didn't, he, he didn't. I don't think he won a world title. I think he did well. He won a USB title. I think, but I don't think he won a world title. Man, yeah, we got but, uh, uh, the good brother Clarence McLean. Want to ask you a know, question, there, champ? The hell out of somebody with a shot, you know, especially my right hand. You got hit with that, bro. You was in trouble. Yeah, that right wasn't no joke. Yeah, that's for sure. That's why I couldn't understand when you were saying people saying you wasn't no puncher, bro. Hey. But um, uh, hey, uh, they champ. Were saying, they were saying that. They still say that to this day. I Man. wasn't a puncher. But they can't say that around he me. Wasn't, he wasn't a puncher. <laughs> you know, you know, I wasn't a puncher. How the hell I get six knockouts hey. hey. in my career? Bro, I had a seventy fight. Yeah, see, and you we, know, I said, "Man, please." And we're going to talk about one of them just in a second, but the good brother Clarence McClain got a, another question for you, champ. Got it. Yeah, uh, champ, what do you think about all these different belts and uh, this new weight class that they came up with? What weight class is that? <laughs> uh, what, uh, 190, I believe it is. The Bridger weight. The, uh, the one they... The Bridger uh, weight. Bridger, 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 Bridger. The Bridger weight, yeah. Yeah, they 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 put another one in just above cruiserweight and uh, extended the heavyweight over two twenty five. Now, now you come in at one ninety to two twenty four, I believe, is what the weight class is now. But it's just WBC so far. WBC so far. And well, you know, and well, you know, WBC is always you know, you see when they come up with you know, really nobody really agrees with. But the thing is, I mean, I mean, fine. If they want, if they want to make that a weight class, just make it a weight class. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there really ain't no difference. Everything is really all about making money. And they felt that because a guy can't make a certain way, if he's caught in between, you know what I'm saying? Because that's where that's where junior lightweight came in. That's where um, flyweight and all the junior weights came in because of that. So. I mean, I don't have a problem with it, as long as they, as long as they fighting real fighters. Yeah, yeah, ain't too many yeah, of them. That's the only thing I say. The, the legitimacy of everything it stands with the fact that you're going to put them in if they're going to go in with good fighters, or you're going to put them in there with bombs. You put them in there with good fighters. I don't really care what weight class you call it, as long as the people are entertained and and it's a real deal and not just bringing a bunch of slush guys that get knocked out all the time, or guys that get that you know, mad about winning record, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter. As long as you got top fighters, good fighters in there, I don't care what weight you call it. Okay. Now, we were talking about the, the knockouts and everything. One we got to talk about, and the good brother, I believe, was Bruce Coles had said asked a little while ago about that Roger Mayweather man. Yeah, we gotta talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Uh, you know, Roger was a trip. Roger was—I mean, I thought we were friends. You know, I found out later Roger was about Roger. But you know, he was—he was a—he was, was, was a good cat to be around. He, he was fun to be around. But one thing about Roger was. He wanted to be the, the center of, of attention all the time. 
and you couldn't take the attention off him. You, it was, if we went out together and we both met girls, he had to have the best look at you. You know, the girl, <laughs> if you have a girl who's friend of him, he's going to try to hit on her whether she's with you or not. I mean, that's happened a couple of times with, while I was out with Roger. And Roger, the thing about Roger is... What do you think about all you know, these different things and uh, this new way of class? And he's greedy with it. You know what I'm saying? He can have a fine as woman. And you have a girl who's just as good as him, and he still ain't happy. You know what I'm saying? Everything he has has to be better than you. And that's the way he carries himself. That's the way he's dealt with everybody. And he's always in charge. Uh, yeah, night, I believe right. you know, with me and him, you know, because like, we used to, I used to hold up with him. I was one of the only guys in the gym that was that could, could uh, you know, do a lot of punishment when it come to him. You know, because he beat the shit out of everybody, and then I come in there, and when he pick up the pace with me, I pick really? up the pace with him. Really? Yeah, and he would catch it more than I would. Mm-hmm. You know, he ended up firing me one time. The first time he brought me down there. The first time he brought me down there, I got him ready for the, uh, uh, I can't remember the guy's name. It was a, it was a fight for the junior lightweight championship defending. He was having his first defense and I, um, I helped him win it. And he fired me, uh, up here a week before, week or two before the fight. He fired me because I was hurting him in the gym. So. And then they said, you know, they then they and then they cheated me out a couple of hours, you know what I'm saying? But when I came, they called me to come back. They made up for that and paid me the money. The one thing about Roger, working with him was it was good money. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, he they paid you good. And what I did, I was the kind of guy that when I went to work with a fighter and I was a uh, sparring partner, you know, we was gonna be around each other. I was also his bodyguard. So if you ever came up around this dude, you know what I'm saying, acting crazy, I was going to take care of it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to let him get in the fight because he, I'm protecting him to get him. My job was to get him to that fight. So if you step up and, get, and try to get an attitude like you're going to do something with him, you got to deal with me first. So and that's how me and Roger, we, you know, and I thought we were friends, you know what I'm saying? And then it was like the bigger... The more my name became bigger in boxing, and I started becoming well known, I started, you know, women start noticing me, and, and like one the one time we in the car, we went, we was going to this club, <laughs> and the girl, the girl that the girl she she asked me my name. I told her my name was, and she was trying to talk to me, but Roger kept trying. I introduced her to Roger, and she was like, "Yeah, okay, how you doing?" And she kept talking to me. And then Roger was, kept interrupting us. <laughs> and she said, um, excuse me, I'm trying to speak with him. You know, I, I got your name. I, I know what your name is. Okay. So she, when she did, it, did him like that, he got pissed. So we, we were supposed to meet them at a the club. And Roger didn't want to go. I was like, man, she, <laughs> you know, because the girl don't like you, you, you don't want to go. Or you, you want to you help me get the girl <laughs> because she was on me and not you. So, you know, he was always like that. <laughs> you know, he, you know, he got to have the best looking girl, you know what I'm saying? Even though he had 10, 10 girls all over the place, you know, if you, if you meet new girls, he want the best one out of the other girls you met. You know what I'm saying? I, I look at it. Cause Roger, I don't know why Roger was, was still running around doing the, the crazy stuff he did. Because especially with the, all these, you know, all these different women that he's dealing with. He got babies all over here. You know, but I'm like this, you know. If that's your thing, that's your thing. But when it comes to me, back off. And he didn't believe in that. You know, so I had to, I had to, I had to teach him that. You know, that, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? One thing about it, you know, we go out, we do, we going out together, you know what I'm saying? And whatever the girl is, the girl choose me, she choose me. Don't keep getting in my face. You know, like easy one time we was out and he just kept getting in the girl's face. We we she got so upset, we went upstairs and um sat at the table upstairs and I couldn't believe he actually followed us up there. You know what I'm saying? But um you know, I do it we 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 talked it out and I told him, Look, man, you know, the deal is, you know, you 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 were who you with, you know what I'm saying? And 
you know, you can't be cop blocking, you know what I'm saying, like that. Excuse my language, I'm keep forgetting them on radio, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can't be jumping in the middle like that, you know. So he so we kinda worked that part worked that part out and we never dealt with it again. Plus the fact that I just never really wanted to deal with him in that sense of going out clubbing with him anymore because I knew, you know, how he was. I, I was, just, you know, yeah. never did it anymore. We stuck with each other. We I helped him win uh, what, two championships, and uh, he had his last defense where he lost the belt to that is the Chavez in, in their third final match. You know he just wouldn't act right for that one. He wasn't he wasn't doing what he needed to do. He was train like he's supposed to train. And uh, I wanted for him the whole time, but I didn't think he was going to win. And you know. I don't know what happened. They stopped the fight. Something I don't know. And that was the last time I worked with him. But I mean, he was a cool. He was real cool. He was charismatic. He was. I mean, he was there. You know, he was. He was a player's player. You know, he was a man for a long time. You know, man. I think when he got older, he kind of missed that. You know, we all do. You know. Exactly. <laughs> exactly, man. Yeah, I don't. I don't miss what I used to do. I mean, I I had girls everywhere, and that's ridiculous. You know, what I'm saying I I I grew up. You know, oh, yeah. I mean, it's always cool. You have fun. You know, these girls like you. You know, what I'm saying everybody loves that. Well, who would you know? But when it was time, when the time time was over, it's time to move to grow up. I grew up. Exactly. You know, so I was into that. Man, champ. Hey, uh, yeah, I wanted to ask you, man, what was it like to be in the ring with uh, Sweet Pea, Pernell Whitaker, man? This guy wanted to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really, I didn't, all I thought about was trying to rip his head off. And the whole time, I just was trying, I was just thinking to myself, just let me get just one second closer, just to land that, I wanted to rip him in peace. I mean, I just wanted to rip him to peace. And, you know, he was slick. He was he was one of the best uh, as far as uh, defensive skills. Nobody close to him. You know, the only thing is I felt that I would have beat him if I would have had, had the right time to get ready for that fight, but I didn't. Yeah, oh, you know, I didn't get the kind of, uh, you know, yeah, I didn't get the kind of work I should have gotten. You know, I was working with a, um, I was working with a, 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 a idiot for a manager, and he tried to get me out of the fight with Pernell, and he tried to, uh, he talking about fighting Tracy Spann instead of Pernell Whitaker, and I said, nah, I'm fighting, I'm fighting Pernell. So he said, he got mad because I didn't fight Pernell. I was gonna, I was, I didn't want to fight Tracy Spann. But he's trying to throw me in just to make a couple dollars, and I wasn't with that. Uh -huh. You know, I was here, I'm here to be a world champion. I ain't trying to win, you know, just to go into a fight to make a couple dollars. So I, I turned that fight, I turned the fight down with, with Stan, and because I'm no more intended, and if I lost, I'm not. So, you know, I said, I'm playing for the world title. I ain't trying to play games, you know. So he got mad and said, uh, if I don't fight Brunel, if I don't fight um, Stan, he, he's not going to work with me. He's not going to give me no more fights. So I said, well, do what you got to do. <laughs> so I went home. And because um, mm -hmm. his contract was running out in six months, that's what he forgot. That his contract ran out in six months. Wow. So, yeah, so I told him, I said, look, you know, Hey, you, would you, you, I'm leaving, and I and I left Florida, and I went home. So, yes, indeed. You know, he was pissed off because I left, and then he called me a few times, tried to get me to come back, and I said no. Man, and I was into that. That's how I ended up managing myself. And for I managed myself for about what two, 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 maybe two or three years. Man, yeah, I signed with a uh, I was uh, um. I with another manager. Okay. Yeah, so. Man, that's the way. 
Man, oh, uh, shout out to the good brother, Shot Town Finest Man, with that cash app, man. Appreciate you, good fam. <laughs> hey, um, champ, I got uh, Trick Nolte, man. Trick Nolte got a question for you, man. Let me unmute you there, uh, Trick. You good, man. brother? Trick. Yeah. Yeah, you good. You can hear you. You can ask the champ, man. Oh, hey, Freddie. Uh oh yeah uh trick is trying to ask you a question but it was uh, a little delayed there a little bit now, can you hear him there yeah. champ can i hear i can hear you, you hear? i can't hear him. say one more Wait, time hey. trick. oh yeah let me hey, I'll uh, ask him. oh go ahead go ahead i don't know if he can hear you that time yeah, but he, uh, he wanted to ask you about uh, the fights with Sammy Fuentes and Horatio Garcia. <laughs> Horatio, oh, Horatio, I don't know. He had too much mouth. I mean, I was getting older. I was, you know, I was getting towards the end of my career. And uh, I took the fight, you know, because I was, I was getting divorced at the time. And I took the fight and everybody... You know, everybody was telling me I shouldn't take the fight until I get over all this stuff. I said, look, well, man, the best way to get over something is going through it. So I just went through, went through the fight, and um, they thought it was going to affect me as far as being, you know, me, you know, working, going through this divorce and everything. And none of it affect me at all. I still knocked his brains clean out of here. Because he ran his mouth too much. He got himself knocked out. Because, you know, I was, you know, I was. <laughs> you know, I told him, look, you know, bro, you might think I'm getting older, and I am. But the thing is, you better understand, I'm dangerous. And he laughed at me and said, you know, he's going to knock me out in front of his wife and kid. I said, really? Okay. Hmm. And then when he went out in the second round, he couldn't believe it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not that joke. Clean the flat out. He lucky that Ruffy was in there. I might have kicked him in the head. He said, oh, I was pissed. I didn't like him at all. Hmm. And uh, but back then I was a nut, you know. What I'm saying? I was crazy while I was fighting. I, 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 <laughs> I would do stuff, boy. That you know, I, I, I was shocked that I am suspended out of boxing a few times. <laughs> you know, I got I got suspended for for a little bit of time for uh, going after one guy, but that was just one. So man. Yeah, man, you had some knockdown, drag out fights for for sure, yep. man. And uh, yeah. man, talk, tell us a little bit. I know you were telling me and Trick a little earlier, man. I don't know if Trick agreed, man. Tell everybody a little bit about how these cats was ducking you, bro. Mm. Oh, everybody, <laughs> nobody knows the piece of me. Delaware ducked me a coward, and then you had uh, Shane uh wow, Shane I think I'm a coward, but I know he knew his best. Nigga say, he Wow. You know, he was a good fighter. You know, they all that quick flash stuff. That stuff works with guys who don't know what you're doing. You know, somebody knows what they're doing, you know, I'd have cut into pieces. So I, I couldn't get mad with him when he said he didn't want to fight. Because the majority of guys that were saying they were the best in this, that, and the other, none of them would fight. Colonel Wigger, after he fought me the first time, he told me he ain't never going to fight me again. <laughs> so... Man, I, I couldn't get mad with him. <laughs> you know, I, I know if I, somebody, if I fought a guy and he beat the crap out of me, I wouldn't want to rematch with him. You know what I'm saying? That I figured I would have a way of beating him. But me, I just never cared about, I don't know, it, was, it really wasn't about winning for me in boxing. It was about the fight. You know what I'm saying? Proving that I'm a better fighter. Ah, see, you know, and, and you know, that's all I cared about was see. going in there and doing damage. And you have to stop me from doing damage if you want to, you know, last in that ring with me. And if I, it was any chance that I could knock you out, you was gonna get knocked out. <laughs> and Colonel Whitaker, you know, I, I, even though I didn't think, you know. He looked like the champion of the world, a three-time world champion. I ain't think, but he he was, as far as defensively, best in the world, best in the world, because <laughs> my timing was just a second off because of that long layoff I hadn't fought in a year. But right at that point, 
I did some damage. But I have to give him the respect. He, he's one of the best fighters I've ever been in the ring with. You know, so. That's one thing I always say. But then you have pretenders like Frankie Randall. <clears throat> you know, he, we fought, we fought yeah. <clears throat> twice. I was killing him the first time, and the referee robbed me and stopped the fight in the fifth round on a cut. That was running down the side of my eye. I understand when it's running in your eye. But when blood is running down the side of your face, that doesn't rob the eye. Exactly. You can still see. And the referee saw that and stopped the fight. And then we find out later that referee's has never been in that ring because he refereed 110 of Frankie Randall's amateur fight. Wow. Oh, wow. So he's never been in that ring. And he, he did Randall a favor. But the second time we fought, I done it, cracked that boy's head open. And, uh, but he, he got, he, he, he got a draw. They called it a draw because he was number one contender in the winner fought for the title. Mm. So he fought for the, he, they gave him, they gave him a draw, which, you know, I was pissed off, but I dealt with it. Cause everybody said, everybody predicted, all the predictors were saying, and the commentators were saying that I wasn't going to go more than three rounds. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> that was a joke. And Randall said after that, I'll never fight. Hey, they asked him for the rematch. She said, man, shit. I ain't gonna fight him again. They said, why not? He said, that man hit me more, more in this one fight than I've been hit my whole fucking career. I was going I ain't never heard nobody say no shit like that. So I, I just cracked up. I said, damn, he always did. <laughs> he got hit one fight he been, more than he been hit his whole fucking career. That's all I hit. He's putting them hands on So Man, anybody yeah, out there man, that don't know who Frankie Randall was, he, that's the guy. I, I have respect for Frankie because I was pissed off at him because he wouldn't fight me. He wouldn't give me a rematch. Mm -hmm. But, you know what I'm saying? He came out and said a couple things that uh, most of the guys wouldn't, wouldn't have the balls to say. You know, they got to say all the bullshit crap like, "Oh, I got robbed." Man. All the guys would say that when they got when they, when I beat them. Like one guy knocked him out. And he said he got robbed. <laughs> how do you how do you put those two together? Yeah, I don't get that. You got I knocked you out. How did you get robbed? Exactly. He, he said because the guy, the referee wasn't doing his job. The referee let me. Elbow him and headbutt him. I said, you got 99 excuses. What, what about the fact that you couldn't do nothing, you couldn't do no damage to me and I pushed you back around, I pushed you all around the ring, you know, causing you to get knocked out, but you don't can, you can, you, you blame it on the referee why you got knocked out. So yeah, you know, none of them guys that make excuses for everything that happened. Exactly. Yeah, you know, so, man. Man, except the fact he got, he got his ass whooped. <laughs> man let me clarify that for everybody champs and for you guys that don't know if you just happen to come in and you don't know who frankie randall is or what he done he's the guy that's credited for beating julio cesar chavez the first time you know officially the first time as mm -hmm. we know so he, yeah he, i don't know why they called the, the second fight for champions because champions that was another coward he won't fight me at all <laughs> he won't fight me at all i mean i couldn't believe don king sent me to new mexico to fight him and this joker left left his hometown to go up in the mountains. He said he ain't gonna spar he ain't wanna spar me, let alone fight me. So damn. I was like, damn, you gonna be the big challenge. Like saying you're you're the best in the world. You're gonna be a legendary fighter. And then I fly should I fly into town, you go out of town to make sure you don't spar me. <laughs> and it's a sparring system. You don't have big gloves on. You know what I'm saying? So they, you don't have to worry about getting knocked out because, you know, he had a hard head. He ain't too many people could knock him out. Yeah. You know, and Frankie Randall put him on his behind. You know what I'm saying? And Frankie Randall's not even fast as I am. You know, and Frankie put him down. So he would have fought me out of knowledge with him. But, um, <laughs> but I was like, how can you, how can you fight Chavez? Chavez had a head like a, like the Astro Dome, man. You couldn't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about us, Black Star? 
And then he, he wasn't as fast as moving his head. He should have, uh, anybody who fought him should have ate him alive. Man. But the only one that was really able to make him pay was Frankie Randall. And that's why he told, <laughs> he told them he ain't never want to play Frank, fight Frankie again. And she, he was right. Because when they rematched, didn't Frankie stop him? Yeah. In a rematch or cut him or something. They, they stopped it on the cut. They stopped it um, for Chavez. Yeah. Oh, he stopped for Chavez. Yeah, they stopped the fight. I think yeah, they um they gave, yeah, they gave Yeah, they gave the fight to Chavez on that cut. No, uh they stopped him. <laughs> yeah, it was a bad Boy, cut. Guys in Boss, man. See, that's the that's one of the reasons why I hated boxing. Because it is it's such a crooked sport. You know what I'm saying? It's it, it's like it's a beautiful sport. And at the same time, it's crooked as hell. Mm. You know, and you want to you wanna admire a guy that goes in the ring and puts his, his life on the line to entertain you. But when you see this kind of ridiculous crap going on with them robbing and stealing fights from guys and they want to create who, who can be a winner and who can't, come on now. You just tear the, tear the sport apart. You make it, make it work not worth watching. You know what I'm saying? Well, you would see these Gumby like punks, like uh, what's what the what that name? I keep forgetting. I can't remember his name. He's such a such a gimp. Oh, Wilder. Tyson Fury. Yeah. He's oh, okay. a joke. Usually, watch him on a comedy show. You know what I'm saying? He ain't no fighter, but they pushing him like he's somebody to to to, to look at or somebody to look up to. But he's a clown. He always will be a clown. You know what I'm saying? But they push him up like he's somebody to look up to, somebody to watch on TV. Give me a break. <laughs> you know, he can't even... Every time he fight, I think it's a comedy show. It's ridiculous the way he acts. <laughs> you know, then, they, then you got the other guy. Uh, uh, what's his name? Um, the other heavyweight? Wilder. Deontay the Wilder. Is, the, the, who? Deontay Wilder. Yeah, Wilder. Come on, man. <laughs> the way he's fighting his name or so it go go exactly together. Wow. He just swing all over the damn place. He has no real you know, and they say they say that Mark Breland is his trainer. And I knew that was BS. Used to be. Yeah. And the reason why I knew that was he used to be because trained. Mark Breland is a real good fighter. And he's yep. a very smart trainer. And I knew something was wrong when they when they were saying that Mark Dillon was the trainer. You know what I'm saying? When I'm like, well, well how come if he's the head trainer, how come the white dude is in the is in the corner? You know, running in the corner the whole time I'm watching, why you tell why you saying he how can he be the head trainer? He's sitting in outside the ring. And then you find out later that the dude, that the other dude that was in the ring, he is actually the trainer. They just want people to think Mark Breland is the head trainer because Mark Breland is the only one in the corner with a name for himself. Uh, so you, you see Mark Breland as uh, Angelo Dundee type, basically. <clears throat> yeah, I don't even think they gave him that. They, they wanted to try to make it work like that. But mm -hmm. the, guy, the clown that was in the corner... You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> he wanted to look like it was him doing all the work, which he actually was, because that's why that's why Wilder can't fight for shit. You know what I'm saying? Because if he actually had Martin Breland training him, being the main man in the corner, make telling him how to work and how to do shit, how to how to throw punches, how to put combination together, he would probably be a ton a lot better than what he is. But the clown that 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 they that took over from what I heard, they got rid of Mark Breland and put you know clown boy in charge for real, <laughs> and let him you know actually from day one dictate. And you know now Mark Breland is supposed to be out. I'm like, how are you going to take out a guy who knows what he's doing and put a clown who don't know anything 
in the number one spot. Yeah. When you already have a problem where you got Wilder just got knocked on his behind by by Clown Senior. Come on, man. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Hey champ, you know, um uh you write about the Mark Breland that he's no longer training them and everything. But I did hear him say something about uh, bringing in two new people. If he does, who who do you think would be two good trainers for him to to turn to 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 help out Deontay Wilder? Deontay Wilder, I don't really know because Floyd Mayweather's style. If they put him Floyd's a good trainer, but they put him in his style is not compatible compatible with um with, with Wilder, you know the. He 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 was that, that flash and flurry type thing, which wouldn't work out with um with Wilder, and I don't think he would be a good trainer for Wilder. I don't really know if there's any really, I really don't know any trainers out there that are supposed to be really good. They got um, what's the guy's name from um California? Um, he was a champion for the world at middleweight. I can't remember his name. But what light can do? He um. He had a couple good fighters. He's a good. He's a good boxer. He may be pretty good for Wilder. He ain't, he ain't as good as he ain't as good a trainer as as, as uh, um as I don't think he's good to train as Mark Breeden. But I think the styles are, are you know the styles match. They they match up the, the kind of styles that they both had. Who you, you know, talking about? Boxing. I can't remember this guy's name though. Yeah, he's trying to remember his name. But he was a good boxer. He was a good boxer at, at middleweight. At middleweight, and he's and, a uh, trainer now. Yeah, he's a good he's a good boxer at middleweight. John and David Jackson. Chick uh, <coughs> say John David Jackson. Keith Jackson Jackson. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Who's the guy Jackson? Uh, what's his name? His first name? I can't remember his first name, but I know his John name David. Jackson. John, John David. David. Yeah. He was he, he he could be a good a good guy for him because Don David Jackson was a good boxer. You know what I'm saying? He could throw good combinations. I don't think he was all that great of you know, I, you know I you know me, I think that beat anybody, you know, so but he was um he was he was pretty good. I think he would be a good trainer for Wilder. Because Wilder is is not you can't you can't make a a banger uh a, a boxer out of a banger. You know what I'm saying? And John David Jackson had moved, good head movement, could get out of the way, could slide inside, stuff like that. And that's what Wilder needs, how to be able to, you know, take people apart, you know, little by little. And I think Jackson was pretty good at that. Okay, okay. So, but there ain't too many, it's not really too many good trainers out there. Everybody say Floyd is a great trainer. Floyd is not a good trainer, not senior, junior. <laughs> He's not a good trainer because he teaches everybody to try to fight like him, and he sucks. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You said, man, 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 man. Wait a minute, you said as, as a trainer, yeah. he's one of the best okay. fighters out there. Yeah. But as a trainer, okay. he's garbage because he tries to teach everybody to fight like him. Yeah. You the only reason why he survived is because he was skillful. He had his technique was perfect for him. Yeah. But you can't teach that style to anybody else because how many fighters are going to be like you? They even had one guy that was looked exactly like him and it didn't work for him. It worked for what? He, the guy's winning the fight. He's killing the game. He's beating the guy easily. Then he gets knocked dead in the, um, in the, I think it was the ninth round or something like that. The, the kid came back and knocked him out. Man. Because it takes a lot to leave, they keep letting punches go, combinations go like that. If you, if, if, you know, everybody can't do it. But Floyd teaches everybody the same shit. Like he was, I had, they brought him to me, and I was working with one of his fighters, and he was good. I mean, this kid was good. Um, I can't remember his name. He got Floyd got him now. What's the, what's the kid's name? The two kids, the two kids that Floyd got that are um champions. Oh, uh, like Devin, uh, Devin Haney. Haney. Devin Haney. I, try, I, work, I was working with Haney, right? I had him up in Miami. I was with Haney for I think it was six weeks, and then his dad talked about because I came late. I got to the gym late, 
because I was working and I was, you know, working with Pfizer. So I had to get, I got out of work uh, 11 to 7 in the morning, and then I would get to, the, I would come to the gym at 12. So I got to the gym at 12.30 one time, you know, because I worked with him for, for two weeks. And then I got to the gym one time at 12.30, and he, this motherfucker left, and his dad told him, uh, he, he, uh, if he, if he ever come late again, you know what I'm saying, this is my son. I'm like, motherfucker, everybody comes late once in a while. <laughs> you know, how the fuck, you know, I'm working, and you know I got a job. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I, I got to the gym, what, 20 minutes late, and you tripping. You know, that's shallow boxing time. You know what I'm saying? You could have been done shallow boxing, and then I could have came right in, we could have started working. Now, he made a big deal out of it. Like, if you, you come late on my side, I don't need that. So, I was like... I came in, I came out late, about 10 minutes, and uh, they they left and said that um, he don't want me training his son. I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I know I'm the best. I know I'm one of the best trainers out there, and you ain't going to find the trainer that knows what I know. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And been through what I've been through. So I said, you're not, because you feel like uh, uh, like you 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 going to make me a bunch of money, I'm supposed to put up with that. No. Because number one, Devin Haney, with the, with the person who's working with him now, I I don't know. I have to ask you: is he is he entertaining or what? I can't tell. Devin, yeah, Devin, Devin got a lot of potential, man. It's uh, the only the only question I have for him is the power aspect of it. But other than that, man, he he uh. He's a pretty solid fighter, man. He don't have a lot of flaws. Uh, the only thing I say is this: that power is. Yeah, but question. how long is uh, well, another question? How long has Devin Haney been on the scene? Uh, well, seriously, uh, not not that long. No, not that long. How long? He, he's with uh, shoot, man. He's with he's been uh, at least five years, right? No. Um, right. Well, well, no. He, not on, not on the, not on the, um, the forefront. He's he's been in boxing the last five now years. I'm but saying he's been pro. Mm-hmm. He's been professional over five years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, did he turn pro? Right. It, it, it's close somewhere in there. If it's not five, it's like three or four, but it's somewhere in there. Right. So, so, this is the rate. This is the speed. The rate of speed you should be moving up. If you've been pro for at least two to three years. If you're not making it, if you're not making it by to the uh, uh, shot in the top ten by then, you're going to slow. If you're not fighting for a world title, because Dan Mahaney had a name for himself in the amateur, yeah. So he should and with and with Floyd Mayweather behind him, it should have took him no more than three years. To get a shot of the world title, right? And then on top of that, now that he's fighting, now that he's is he champion now? He's champion world now, right? Yeah, yeah, he's champ now. Right, he is. He is not and been impressive as a champion, to my knowledge. Yet I've seen him fight. He has impressed me in any fight. It looks like he's fighting the average dude. You know what I'm saying? Nobody with any real, real skills. Yeah. And he hasn't, you know, dominated and, and just came in and destroyed anybody. Okay. You know what I'm saying? To me, okay. it's they're, they're dragging their feet with him. He has a lot of potential. Yeah. But he has nobody to train him. So when I was working with him, I was teaching him stuff. That he, you know what I'm saying? If he would have, if he could have picked it up and I, and they let me work with him, I only worked with him, I think it was two weeks we worked together and I was teaching him some, some, some things he was never going to learn from these guys that, you know, kind of like all the trainers in Floyd's camp have no idea of what I do. You know what I'm saying? And I was, when I was, I was in this barn with guys. When they came down, and they was they brought their fighters down. They had a couple fighters getting ready to fight, so they came down to Miami, you know. And they was watching, and I was in the ring, sparring with three of my fighters. You know what I'm saying? It was like 
you spoiled your fighters, yeah, why not? Uh, you know, I, I can still do it. <laughs> so why not? They got to learn. How are they going to learn what guys are going to do to you if they don't actually see it? You know exactly. what I'm saying? Anybody can tell you this is going to happen, that's going to happen, this is going to happen. But when I show you, you know what I'm saying, when we work together and I do both things to fool them, they're going to see this stuff. They're going to learn this stuff, and they'll be able to deal with it when they go when they find a guy when they go into it with a guy that's they got a little bit of experience. They're going to have more experience because I've been teaching them everything. I've been working with them. I've been sparring with them. They see things they ain't never going to see the other guys do. These other guys do. They're never going to see that. They're going to be able to do things that these guys haven't seen. Period. Exactly, man. So. You know, it's, it's a plus. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm telling you. But no, nah, these, these clowns, and, and you know, the guys that Floyd bring in are guys that listen to him, and that's it. You know, it's got everything got to go his way. Nah, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? If you pay me to train your fighters, I'm gonna train your fighters who I think they should be trained. You know what I'm saying? I'm the trainer. You're not. So far as I'm concerned. You just pay me my check and let me do my work. And if you're not satisfied with my work, then you can find me. But you ain't going to tell me how to train people. That's not going to happen. Exactly. See, but that's how Floyd does with his fighters. That's why he don't have many of them that are very good. Because he tells the trainer how to, you know, he going to come in and tell you, well, he should be doing that. No, nah, motherfucker, sit your ass down. You paying me to do a job. Now, my fighter starts winning. You know what I'm saying? Then you can come talk to me. But when my fighter keeps winning, he keeps looking good and looking better and better. <coughs> and just be the money man. There you go. Can't you know what I'm saying? Progress. And that's how it's supposed to go. But see, you know, Floyd, wanna, he want to get credit for being this, that. He want to be everything. Mm-hmm. See, Roger was bad. Roger was bad. Floyd's worse. Hmm. And then, you know, you want to you you keep <laughs> me away and punish me because I knock out Roger, so now he won't give me a job, he won't hire me at none of his gyms. I, I, I went to, the people in Florida and, and California wanted me to work there, and then when, he, when he, they told Floyd about it, Floyd said, no, I can't work. So they obviously yeah. didn't think I need them. You know, so I'm like, hey, that's just, <laughs> you don't hurt me by telling me I can't work for you. You hurt your fighter. Because I'm one of the best trainers in the game. You know what I'm saying? My style, you know, right now, it's only three guys left that teach my style. And they're, um, you know what I'm saying? You know, after I'm gone, you know what I'm saying, how many guys are going to be left? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, it ain't too many really good trainers out here, and we're losing them all, and and nobody's like, what, what the problem is, none of the fighters that come out of the game are going back into it as trainers. The majority yeah. of them are just quitting and going on about their business. That's you know what I'm saying? The ones that are in it, you know what I'm saying, now, like, well, here it is. I'm in Philadelphia, right? They want, they want, they don't want to let me work out down here because they all know I'm better than them. They know I'm a better trainer. You know, I'm a better trainer, I'm a better fighter than anything they had down here. So they want to blackball me as far as teaching fighters, you know, what to do. So I laugh at them. I say, look, you ain't hurting me, you're hurting the fighter. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, while I'm here, you know, again, always know I'm still here is because of this pandemic crap. And as soon as that's over, ooh, as soon as that's over, you know, I'm beat up with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm going back home. And, and, and start helping these kids that I was helping out back home. So. Man. Yeah, Chip, uh, hey, Chip I got a question. Yeah, we got... Uh, Got a couple of uh, guys. One got a couple of questions for you, man. I had uh, uh let me let me get underrated first trick because he was waiting. Go he ahead, was, go ahead, go ahead. And then I'm gonna come right to you there. Hey, underrated, did it? You ready, good brother? 
Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear him, champ? Yeah, I hear a little bit. Okay, yeah. Um, tell tell us about uh, Felix Trinidad. Is the audio <laughs> on? <laughs> uh, I was waiting for that question. No, no, Felix was, he, he was a fighter. He just wasn't, he just wasn't in my caliber. So my own corner drug me in that fight. Mm. They, they, they put something on my nose in the corner. You know what oh, I'm saying? Wow. I mean, all you got to do is watch it with yourself. Wow. You know, when you, you, if you get another fight or you pull a fight up, you know what I'm saying? You'll see, y'all come back to my corner and... My trainer takes and puts a swab up my nose and starts wiping my nose. And I slap his hand down. What the hell are you doing? And he tell me, oh, he, he, he cleaned my nose. I clean my nose out for what? Ain't no blood bleeding. I'm not bleeding. So I just clean my nose out. Wow. Mm. So I throw out the next round, I can't finish? Come on now. That's, they, the, that's he, dirty. You know, he made sure I didn't get up. I couldn't get up and finish that fight, so. Wow, man. Mm. That's Hey, champ, drop wow. on that one, man, for sure. He dropped, but yeah, because we, yeah, because yeah, I heard throughout I the years that I, I, I try to, I try to beat my own, my trainer's head in that, that fight, but um, they called security back there, and I told them to put him out. And they said, "Oh, well, you know, we got to get him out." Yeah, so they put him out. So I said, "Well, I can't put him out. I got to get him out." So he, uh, he come on, I'm going to go out and watch him fight. He said, no, you got to leave. And they put him out. They put him out the house, period. They put him, they, they told me to leave the building. So he left. You know, yeah. that's that. Wow. So, Unbelievable. But I mean, I was just, you know, because, um, you know, that I, I was going to show everybody that I was the best by taking Trey that out and, they made sure I didn't. You know, Don was involved in that. Making sure I didn't win that fight. He was backing you know, them up. Yeah, they liked me what I was going to do. Anybody saw that fight, saw what I was doing in training, they had the first three rounds I was playing with him, and I wasn't going to pick up on him until round six. You know, and they got me, and before I got my chance, they got me. You know, that's, that's that's the game of boxing, you know what I'm saying? They don't want to they don't want they want to pick and choose who can be champion, who can win who can win, who can win, who wins and who loses. And that's not real. That's bull crap. Until the people demand that they root that kind of bullshit out, it ain't never gonna change. Cause right now, they're doing the same thing. They're fixing fights. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? They're making, they're picking children who can be champion and who can't. Oh, you know? Wow. And, 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 you know <laughs> people don't have no say so. And until people stand up and say, you know, y'all gonna stop this school crap, it's gonna keep going on. Every sport out there is getting worse. It's, it's getting to be garbage. You know what I mean? I used to watch football all the time. I don't even want to watch it no more. You know, because, you know, they change the rules, they change everything to fit the way they wanted to go. And I'm just tired of it. Like, you know, then they got boxing, where they want to pick and choose who goes where by the way you look. And it's ridiculous. So, I mean, pretty much little by little, they kill every sport. Man. Yeah, champ, man, uh, champ. It's, it's, it's giving thank us you, a champ. Beautiful. Man, yes, indeed. And a good, good brother, Trick Nolte, man. Trick Nolte Promotions in the building, man. He got a question for you there, champ. Hey, uh, Freddie. Um, I, I have a question. Um, I mean, you know, me and you talk a lot, pretty much, but I, I never, I, I think I asked you this before, but um, I, I can't remember what you had said. But uh, my thing is, when you fought Trinidad, did you ex suspect anything with his gloves? You know, you know was there any speculation about that? Anything about his gloves being loaded, wrapped, anything like that? You know, with the hand wraps. No, I wasn't that. He, he, my trainer, watch a fight, right? If you watch a trainer fight, you watch. I'll come back to the corner. I'm getting ready to go out for the next round. He sticks a squab up my nose. Clean okay, my so, nose. 
he's clearing my nose. And I slapped his hand away and asked him what the hell is he doing. And he tells him, oh, I'm just clearing his nose out. For what? I'm not bleeding. Hmm. That was, that was him putting that stuff on my nose. He put okay. something on my nose. Okay. One, wow. one more question, too. Yeah, um, my hand. Uh, um, I, did, I went back and said that so I, so I was in trouble. And so ain't Richard Steele, because that piece, that piece of crap knew <laughs> what was going on. Because number one, he stood, he stood way back home. He saw me in trouble. He had plenty of time to get over and find out what was wrong. He didn't do nothing. He watched straight that wrong mm. way. All right, I got, I, I, got, I got one more question, man. What do you think about being tacky, man? Who? You being tacky because you fought being tacky. Being tacky? Yeah, African guy. Oh, uh, did I fight Ben tacky? You mean that? You talking about when, um, oh yeah, you talking about that, the fight that, uh, they stopped? Yeah, it was in 2000. Yeah, they stopped that fight, you know, early. Yeah, it was bullshit. Really, it was bullshit. I mean, they should have stopped the fight. They should have gave me the opportunity to, to continue. But they didn't because they had the fiction on that fight with Russell Pelt. And um, it was Russell Pelt who was promoted with this other guy. And they knew what was going on. And they knew Ben Jackson was getting with. I guess it was, if you count... You know what the punch count was for the first round? I mean, for that round they stopped it in? The punch count was, I had hit him on what? I think it was like 90 something to two. Damn. What the punch count? Hey. Mm. So, how are you going to beat me if I hit you 90 something, 90, 90 some odd times? The two, the, to your landing, two punches. They stopped the fight because they knew that Joker had no chance in, in hell of winning that fight. Oh, Man. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So, he, he headbutted me. My eyes are bleeding. Oh. I can't see. Then the rough bitch has continued while I'm still bleeding. That's dirty, man. Oh, man. Yeah, hey, they, champ, they, you're not they, human. They've been doing dirt to me since my career started. My first fight, they robbed me. I beat this guy. I beat the hell out of this guy in my hometown. And they, that's that's why I hate Philadelphia. You know what I'm saying? These pieces of shit robbed me out of my first fight. You know what I'm saying? I beat the crap out of this dude, and they gave him the decision. The people booed it, and they, they didn't give a shit. They gave this coward a fight over me. Because they felt he had a, his career was going somewhere, and mine's what? It was our first fight. How could you tell? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? And obviously, I was going somewhere because here's the guy you say you think going somewhere, and I beat the smoke out of him. Hmm. Mm. You know, so I said, it's just ridiculous, you know? So. You know, it, but, it, but that's what I say about boxing, you know? I told everybody that this thing was coming. Everybody was talking about this shit. I said, bro, you can't pick and choose who wins championships. You know what I'm saying? It has to be the people. You know what I'm saying? You you want to say, the people got to watch this guy get his behind kick, and you still call him the winner. How long do you think people are going to pay to see that? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's getting to that point now where you, they're bringing in guys that do not have qualifications to even be called the world champion, but that's who will win the world titles. And then they fight guys who don't have no business in the world, not only not being in the top ten, but fighting for a title. Are you kidding me? One guy I saw that was, was for the... Uh, the featherweight championship, and they both look like they look, look, look like amateurs. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I've seen Golden Bird championships with more skills than these guys. It's ridiculous. How these guys can do this and get away with it, and people just sit back and say, nothing. Mm. 
Wow. You know what I'm saying? These children make millions of dollars off you, your hard earned money. You know what I'm saying? And you're getting what for it? Spit on? Please. Not me. I haven't been to a, a fight in years. I mean, years. Yeah, I went to my first, the first fight I went to in a long time was was down here. I went to a, I went to a show, and me I'm a former wrestler. I went with another guy that was a contender, and they tell me I gotta pay to get in. Oh man! Yeah. I told the guy, man, go screw yourself. And you know, <laughs> right, you know why you, you know why you talk like that? I said, you know. The promoter walked by me and don't okay them to let tell them no, I gotta pay to get in. I said, nah, fuck him. You know what I'm saying? I said, number one, when you have world champions showing up at your fights, that brings more people. Because what they do, guy come home and say, man, shit, I'm at, I'm at Freddie Tones in last night. I'm at so and so last night. You know what I'm saying? At the show. We, don't you think the next time you have a show, more people want to show up because, oh, you got world champions and, 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 and top fighters and contenders showing up at your fight. You don't want to get a picture with him. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you fact. want to say something to him. That's right. You know, that makes, that makes more money for you. But if you're ignorant, because Trump Duffy has always been ignorant when it's come to me. They've always... They, they robbed me. They always told me I wasn't going to never be nothing. You know what I'm saying? And, and when I came there to fight, they told me I had to pay. And I told them where to go. Because I ain't paying nothing. You know what I'm saying? So I, I go in the ring and fight. You know what I'm saying? We're fighting. We, 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 once you won, if you won a junior championship, if you won a USB championship or any BM championship, you know, any kind of championship, you shouldn't have to pay to get in the fight. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And if I ever get to the point where I'm, I'm promoting an actual fight promoter, I become a fight promoter, top champions ain't going to have to pay nothing to get no fight. Now, your friends might have to pay, but you ain't going to pay shit. You know what I'm saying? Because the reason why boxing is big is because fighters putting their life on the line. So they ain't got to... You know, when you once you hit, you want a USB title or something like that, you can come any show. You can walk in, no problem. You know what I'm saying? Hey, good. That's the reason why people come out to see fight. They want to see champions. You know what I'm saying? They want to see guys become champions. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta have some kind of respect for these guys out there. Getting, you know, you banging on each other. To entertain you, you know what I'm saying, and you sell the house because of them. He sells the house because you're a good promoter. There's no fuck about the promoter. <laughs> they didn't come to see a promoter fight. They come to see the fighters. Yeah. Exactly. You know, but the promoters act like they're the ones that are getting in the goddamn ring, and they ain't got shit to do with that. Okay. Yeah, you heard. Funny off with these kids though. Man, that's big facts, but they don't show No respect for yeah. the fight. It's all about them. Yeah, that's big facts there. Yeah. Man. Hey, champ, we got a question from uh, Shot Town Finest in the chat, man. He says, uh, I know we talked about this a little earlier. You, me, you, and Trick did. <laughs> uh, he said, What do you think about the Tyson and uh, Roy Jones fight coming up next week? Oh, man. <laughs> Damn. 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 Now, hey, I'm going to 
tell you right now, I wouldn't want to get hit by Mike. But if Mike came up to me and was talking crap, me and Mike be fighting. If you come on me, I'm going to come at you. But the thing is this, I know that Mike can punch. I know if Mike hit me good, I'm out. Hmm. Yeah, I know if he hit, if he hit the only way, but if he hit me good, we're going to court because I'm suing that door with anything he got. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> Roy, Roy, Mike, when Roy go out, he ain't going to be able to sue nobody. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, he fight, you know, I wouldn't even be stupid enough to step in the ring with, with Mike crazy behind him. <laughs> yeah, that's and he said, Roy ain't get his, yeah, lit- his litigation together. <laughs> <laughs> that dude might be arranged your damn head when he hit you with mm. the shot. Especially, and Roy just, Roy got knocked out by a guy that, that really wasn't a big puncher. You know what I'm saying? So, Roy, Roy just taking it for the money. You know what I'm saying? You know, I can't get mad. You know, it's, it's good money. spoke man yeah, that's for sure hey champ uh i wanted to ask you too man uh myself man um uh i know that you had uh fights with uh uh the, the great uh rise eye uh livingston bramble man uh tell us tell us tell us about that guy well you know i'm saying you know amigas and- <laughs> You still yeah, doing right. that? To, you still doing that now, huh, Champ? Yep. Okay. So okay. Get back to me, this virus is done, and I can get back to Florida. I'm, I'm working with a boy in my gym. I got. I'm working at two different gyms, training, training fighters and kids. Oh man, that's you know awesome. And, and yeah, you got. I got. You know, I love doing it. I mean, I, and, and somebody helped me. The guy that helped me, I found out later. And he, he was screwing me over. But I'm going to do the right thing. Exactly. Because what he did for me got me out of the street. Got me out of here. You know, I would probably, you know, go around here fighting anybody and eventually would have got shot or killed or something like that if I wouldn't have walked into boxing. Because I was, 
I walk in Oakville, all of Oakville loves me and tell them, you know, and God would tell me, you ain't from this neighborhood, we ain't trying to go to hell. You know what I'm saying? I ain't give a damn about no gangs or nothing like that. And I, I was just didn't care and wasn't afraid of nothing. Yeah. And when I got with my trainer, and I stuck, and he, he told me, if you ever hear about me in the street fighting, I'm out of there. Wow. You know, so once I learned it, and I and I and I and everything, and I started really getting good, I didn't want to leave that gym. I, just, you know, I stayed right up in there. I, Training hard and get everything right. <clears throat> yeah, chances. I tell my, my trainer, I tell my kids the same thing. I hate you fight in school. You know what I'm saying? You're out the street trying to play tough guy. You're out of here. I don't play that. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And one thing, I, one thing you got to do is school. Stay in school. You know what I'm saying? And, and get good grades and do well. You know what I'm saying? So you can move ahead in life and, and you know, get to have to get some good education and take care of yourself and make that money. You exactly. know what I'm saying? So Yeah, champ, I'm glad you said you that, know, man. And, 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 yeah, it's I love working with kids, man. It's, and you know, my son he my son man should uh, thank God I never told him to be a fighter. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I told him and that kid was good. I mean he made me look bad. I was like, damn man, he was a southpaw. And he was way better than me. Man. But I didn't want him in, in, in boxing. I didn't, didn't want him to be a fighter. I wanted him in school. Yeah. So, man, that's I awesome, man. But see, you, you, uh, you know, in school, they, you, they don't teach you everything you need to know, but yeah. it's better than nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. And a lot of things, they make, but how they work with these black kids, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like they, they really pretty much just the past out here in the first place. Exactly. You know, they're looking out for your well being, they're looking out for your benefits, they're not making sure you get the right teaching, you're not getting the right study program. You know, you're studying all kind of bullshit about them. Yeah. And you ain't studying nothing about yourself. Exactly. And I, and I like how you, you brought the point in about how boxing is, uh, gave you discipline and how you implemented discipline to the, to your students and you, and you, Showing them a mode of discipline. A lot of these kids probably on the streets, you know, like fatherless or whatever be the case, and they don't they lack that discipline. And then they come in and fall in love with a sport like this, like you did, and how it how it affected you. And you say yourself, man, you learn, hey, I can't do these other things if I want to do this. So I start to, you know, and you learn discipline. And then you started to master your craft. And then look where it took you. All the way to the championship, bro. Yeah. And yeah, I tell them all the time, you know, and yeah, everybody wants to be a tough guy, but everybody wants to show that they Came up hard, came up rough, and then 
you know, they, you know, just trying to get by. I, I was lucky, and I was, I would consider myself blessed. So I like to, you know, pass it on to other kids. Exactly, man. That's that's. <laughs> Yeah, that's a great story there, champ. And that's a noble mission that you got there, man. Uh, I tell you, man, you might stumble across the I next champ. I've never, I've never had, I mean, it's always been what I wanted to do. Ever since I was young, I wanted to be a pro wrestler. That's where it's at. That's what's needed. You know, I, I can't wait to get back home. And uh, once I get back to this fire, I'm just going to go back to doing what I'm, what I'm used to doing. And, you know. Yeah. Because yeah, I enjoy myself when these kids learn and they pick up and, and, and you see them doing what you taught them how to do. And, and, <laughs> so I had a couple kids that went to the, was in the Golden Gloves in Miami and did well. And it makes you feel good, you know? Yeah, it does. And then you find out later that they got wife and kids and family and that's it. You know, that makes you, you know, feel like you really did something. Exactly. You kept a kid from him ended up, you know, out on the streets, you know, getting shot or something like that. <clears throat> you know, like right now I got one of the kids I know. I talk to him every now and then. He's, uh, he's in Miami. He's, uh, he, he got a wife and daughter and, you know, he's doing good. I'm happy for him, and he, he told me that, uh, you know, it's, it's like he, everything he got because of me. Man. See, and I told him, no, it's not. He said, what do you mean? I said, it's not because of me, it's because of you. Because if you didn't listen and turn things around and go, and go in the right direction, my words don't mean nothing. So it's because of you, not because of me. So, so I'm glad that he, you know, feels like there's something to help him stay on the straight and narrow. So that's what makes me feel good. I just want to keep doing that for other kids. Now, now I get back, it's going to be crazy. going to be working at two different gyms. <laughs> that's going to be tough. Go from one side of the town to the other side of the town. You gotta go. I got to the, the Latino neighborhood that I gotta go over to the hood. And, uh, because my boy's putting up a big gym there, so he wants me to work with him, so I'll be working in it. And then okay. one, one section, and then one over to the other side, which is my own. Go with the other kid. Man. Got a couple got a couple of pros that, that's gonna be working with me, too. Okay, okay. You got some interesting stuff coming up, man. That's that sound all right there, man. And you know, champ, man. Any, yeah, man, you know, any, any time. Hey, man, I'm, one, I'm one of them guys that work it. Work don't bother me. I love work. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh yeah, man. You can tell by the way you fought. Know, when yeah. I was married, I just get pissed off because I used to. You know, I'm always, I'm always out. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, well, you know, somebody got to bring money in. You know, they ain't gonna be. Bye bye, man. I'm just gonna get help. Uh, but um, no, nah, so um, you know, somebody gotta go make this money. You know what I'm saying? You up there. You know, yeah. she had a job, and I had a job. Yeah, you know, so. yeah, that's all right. Working the day I was at night. So. Yeah, well, you know, champ. Anytime you, know, you want to. Uh, yeah, anytime you had, you know, a fight or somebody you wanted to bring through here, man, you know, you're always welcome, champ, anytime, you know? Oh, yeah, man, you know, I, <laughs> so I, so I get things set up, I get things running the way I want them to go, I'll be calling y'all up for sure. Oh, yeah, you know yeah, we definitely, definitely kick the mm-hmm. link there, champ, for sure. You know, you know, it's always good to have a, a place, a home base, you know what I'm saying? And... I don't give a damn about these, you know, TV and all that's good, you know what I'm saying, but when you got a home base where you can go and you can say whatever you want to say, that's better. Exactly. Great for me. Because television, you got to be careful and all this stuff that you say and that and other and all this, you know, and they worried about, you know, the people that sponsor them and all that kind of bullshit. I don't get that confidence. 
Exactly. And I see things on TV, and they'd be like, well, you, you, you shouldn't have said that. Yeah, well. <laughs> you know, what I mean? it's like, I'm going to say what I got to say. Yes, indeed. Yeah, so it's like, I'm Mm -hmm. Hey champ, you know man, it, it's it's um yeah. yeah champ, it's been it's been great champ. Now I don't mean to cut you off champ or anything like that, but um, yeah my 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 schedule is a little cloudy right here right now, and um I'm at the end this in a little bit, but champ man, you welcome on here anytime you want to come over here and chop it up, man. And we do this uh shoot se right, seven days a week. Yeah. When y'all want y'all wanna call me, just say yo, let's let's do this. Whenever you yeah. need me, whenever you want, whenever you want to talk to me, just call me up. I'm down. Hey, champ. Appreciate, hey, that. I appreciate that, champ, man. And, and the good brother, Trick Nolte, man. Uh, you know, yeah. Trick Nolte Promotions working it, man. I'm telling you, man. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All that, Trick, yeah, yeah, Trick working overtime. Yeah, man. And and the good brother, the champ, come through here, man. I, I really appreciate that, to Freddie, man, because, champ, man, we – used to watch you all the time and everything and it's a thrill for yeah. myself to get a chance to talk to you and, and just chop That's it up great. about boxing man that, that means a whole lot man and uh yeah. when contacted me yep. man he said yeah i'm on freddie pesce what i said what huh man hell yeah yeah, <laughs> so, yeah right yo this is the underrated one i used to watch you man mm, it's a thrill So, I was in, I'm in Columbia, right? So I'm walking around yeah. Columbia, and everybody's, you know, oh, they know they're fighting. So all these people are shaking my hand and come up to me, want to take pictures. So, so I'm standing on the corner looking to buy me a, to buy a paper. So a little girl comes up and she just starts walking around me in the circle. So I'm looking at her and I'm like, why is she, why is she walking around? Me? And then she said something to me in Spanish. And I, you know, I don't speak Spanish, so I'm looking at her, you know, shrugging my shoulders. And then she walked over to my trainer who spoke Spanish and asked him a question. And he started laughing. I said, what'd she say? He said, oh, she, asked, she asked him, how come he looks like me, but he don't talk like me? Hmm. And we all started laughing because you know, she speaks Spanish and I don't. Yeah. And he explained to her that, uh, you know, I was from a different place. <laughs> that was the funniest thing I ever heard. I mean, his little girl just looked at me like, what the hell? And she didn't leave. She just walked. <laughs> she started walking around looking at me. And I'm oh. like, what's, what's wrong with her? And, she, <laughs> and he asked her, she said, how come you look like me? But you don't speak like me. I was like, what? Yeah, we just cracked out of that. <laughs> man, that's something else there, champ. Man, I tell you, yeah, yeah, I tell you yeah, one man. thing, bro. I wish I had to, uh, got you on that stream yard, man. That would have been really awesome. We could have kept going, man, because I, I really don't want to shut it down. But unfortunately, I'm gonna have to because of my technical difficulties. Yeah, but um, you know, we, we gotta figure out that, figure out what's going on with that anyway, because I don't know what's going on. We gotta definitely get that straight down. So. Well, maybe we can do it again yeah, next we weekend, champ. If 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 you're free next mm -hmm. weekend, if you're free next weekend, we can do it again, champ. Or, um, yeah. you know, or possibly this a day this week. I mean, I don't know what your schedule is like, but uh, uh, like I say, we you know, me and I'm pretty sure Trick will keep in touch with you, and, and we can find out you know when we can work something out for sure. Yeah, you said the weekend, so that's cool. Yeah. I'll do it next weekend. I mean, you know, okay, that, okay, okay. Well, we'll lock it in same time next weekend then. We'll, All right. we'll do it. We'll go ahead and uh, uh, get get that rocket, man. I let everybody know you be here, man. We get more people come check you out. 
Okay. For sure, right, champ. Boy. Hey, champ. Thanks All so right, much, man. champ. We we sure have enjoyed this time, thank man. You. We look forward to this next week. Thank you. All right. Yeah, All right. Thank you, Freddie. Hey, I'm gonna call you, Freddie. There you go. Good brother, Trick okay. Nolte. Clarence McLean in the building. We got underrated one. And plus, my uh, road dog basement boxer talk was on here as well. Everybody in the chat, man. We salute you there, champ. Oh, man. I appreciate just being here. Yes, yes, thank you. Hey, right, y'all. We'll continue this next week. Next week. Yes, indeed. All right. All right. Yes, indeed. Uh, yeah, y'all. Well, um, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and shut this down, everybody, man. Like I said, we got to get on some other thing, man. It's been awesome, man. I hope everybody enjoyed it, man. I had the champ, man. The fearless mm -hmm. Freddie's penalty, man, up in here, man. Yeah. I hate it. Man, I'm telling you, he got more to say. He got more to say. And mm -hmm. we're gonna, you know, this, we look forward to this weekend, man. So we'll we'll go ahead next Saturday. We'll go ahead and plan ahead to go ahead and have your brother back again, man, and and, and continue this, man, because. I tell you, man, if you want to know about the sport of boxing, man, this is the brother to talk to, man. He done seen it and and, and done it all to the full. And, uh, yeah, man, we're going to continue this. And I appreciate the good brother, Underrated Darkness, joining me, man. Uh, Basement mm -hmm. Box Talk, my road dog. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Trick Nolte coming through the building with Trick Nolte Promotions, man. For mm -hmm. sure, for sure. Man, and uh, good brother Clarence McClain also as well come through here, man. Uh and uh, everybody else in the chat, man, for, for joining along with us, man. We definitely appreciate you, man. Um, okay. Yeah, that's about it, man. Hang in there. I'm ready to holler at you for a second, good brother. And I'm going to shut this down, and then we'll, we'll, we'll wrap up the taste. Yes. Yes, indeed. And uh, yeah, everybody subscribe to my good brother, Underrated Do Darkness, man. And we about to go on there at uh, 6, p 6 p.m. Eastern time, 5 p.m. Central time. Check out the brother under red dots. We do that underrated boxing talk, man. For sure, we're gonna keep it going, man. He get, he gonna cook on some things, man. So you want to hear the brother do that thing, man? Because he's the number one grind. I, I can't do the number one grinder, but then my brother gonna do it for you. And there, uh, yeah, but that's about it. Hey, man, everybody, peace, love, happiness to everybody, man. Peace and blessings to everybody in their fam, man. Uh, we Black Star Sports TV.